Okay, we're live. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, fellow commissioners. And I'd like to welcome you to this county commissioners meeting uh, today, October, or not October, August uh, 18th, uh, 2020. Um, I first of all would like to make public announcement that uh, the public will be able to comment immediately following the public hearing presentation uh, for planning and zoning and also during the public comment section of the agenda by calling 307-872-3891 or by sending comments ahead of time via email to publiccomments at sweet.wi.us. With that, I'd like to call this meeting to order and note and notify that we do have a quorum present. If everyone will please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of, the United, of the United States, States of America, America and, to the, and to the Republic for which it stands, stands one, nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible and with liberty and justice for all. Our uh, first order of business today will be the approval of the agenda. And with that, commissioners, uh, uh, two 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 adjustments. First of all, under tab L, rather than approve the uh, request for the indemnity, usage and indemnity agreement for the electing polling place at the Catholic Church. Um, co commissioners were contacted in support of that uh, because it had to be in place for today. So therefore, rather than approve, it'll be to ratify um, that approval because it was approved by commissioners and so that'll be a ratify rather than approval and then also uh, I'd like to amend the agenda as well to add a tab O which will be all west uh, cable vision all west communication update with um, Mr. Carollo as well as another uh, individual from all west so uh, and if there's anything else for other commissioners to add or amend If there isn't, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda with the two mentioned amendments. So moved. Got a motion by Commissioner Johnson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shanefield. All in favor? Signify aye. saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Next up is the approval of the minutes from August 4th, 2020. Commissioner, it's your pleasure. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Shanefield. I make a motion to approve the minutes from August 4th, 2020 as presented. Got a motion, is there a second? Second. Second, Commissioner Lloyd. All those, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same aye. Sign. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, next on the agenda is approval of our bills, which will include the, yeah, the uh, county vouchers and warrants, the bonds, the monthly reports, as well as the hospital expenditures. Commissioners, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the county vouchers and warrants, the AL, the bonds, the monthly reports, the hospital expenditures as presented. We have a motion to approve those as presented. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lloyd. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Next order of business is uh, the planning and zoning. We have a public hearing regarding the Ranch View Estate Subdivision Final Plat. I'm um, here to present that uh, is Mr. Bingham from Planning and Zoning and I believe you have uh, a couple other individuals with you. Is that correct, Eric? Yes, it is, Mr. Chairman. So um, the individuals that are also, well, first let's introduce the developers and they are on the call. That's who you see on the Zoom call there, Lane. So that's Lane and Laura Fillingham. And 
there's also another developers that is Randy Lauder and Judy Lauder are also on the call. We also have Randy Hansen. He is the engineer with JFC that designed the subdivision. So that's who we have us. Thank us. you, Eric, and good morning to uh, Laura, to Elaine and Lauren and, and Randy and Judy, as well as Randy Hansen. Uh, thank you for being here. So floor is yours, Eric. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So today we, uh, we are hearing the final plat. This is for the Ranch View Estate subdivision. The property owner is Randy Lauder and Lane Fillingham, and also is the applicant. It's a 41.89 acre in section one township 18 North Range 108 West. The location of this is north of Interstate 80 off of Gansland Road. It's adjacent to the Green River Golf Course. The zoning is R1, single family residential. It is our most restrictive zoning classification, which does not allow horses it, um, or agricultural animals, and it only allows site built homes. The infrastructure is going to be septic system. It was approved through the Wyoming Department of Environmental Quality, which is a requirement as per state statute and they have received approval from DEQ on both the water and the septic systems. Due to the location, the uh, DEQ is uh, requiring advanced septic systems on these lots. It will be, as far as the responder, Green River Fire Department and Sweetwater County Fire Warden, Rocky Mountain Power and Dominion Energy Natural Gas. They submitted a preliminary plat back in 2019 of May, which was approved for the one, and they also received a variance from the Board of County Commissioners for the one acre lot size. Domestic water is gonna be provided by Jamestown Rio Vista. And we know that they do not provide public sewer. So it'll just be a public water system in there. The roads will be constructed to Sweetwater County standards and dedicated to the county for maintenance. The county is requiring a 60 foot right of way, which is on the plat. And then there are 10 foot utility easements on both sides <coughs> as required by the growth management area. Uh, parts, portions of lots seven, eight and nine are located within the FEMA designated floodplain. That's why those lots are a little bit larger than one acre to provide enough up building envelope to locate homes. And on-site drainage infrastructure will be utilized to control runoff. So right here, uh, Mr. Chairman, and Board of County Commissioners is the location of all three phases. What we're constructing is this location right here that's adjacent to the river, which is phase one. Phases two and three were approved on the preliminary plat, will be built at a later time. Just phase one we're for right now. So here is the final plat and phases one. Shows you the location. Uh, what you can see on a dotted line here is the existing Gansland Road. That will be vacated after the construction of the subdivision. So in a few months, you will see us coming back before the commissioners to vacate that road. So while these roads are being constructed to county standards. And then it, coming into here is the Ganslin Road. So three different roads you can see here will be located on there. And then this is lot 789 here that uh, show you they're a little bit larger in size to provide for that FEMA zone. Zoning is R1, it's adjacent to the Gansland Ranch subdivision. As far as public agency comments that have come in, there, there was a requirement from Rocky Mountain Power to extend the utility easement. The applicant has done that. As far as my comments go, just so you're aware, we have not received letters of credit yet for the improvements. I do have attached a subdivision improvements agreement that I will discuss in just a moment. And we're still waiting for the check for the fees in lieu of. As far as emergency management go, they had no concerns, Dominion Energy, uh, they didn't have any concerns either. So back when we heard this before the Planning and Zoning Commission, we were awaiting the county engineer for construction plans to be approved. We did receive a final rendition uh, last night and Dean did go over those and has approved the construction drawings. 
So that part has been taken care of. So the construction drawings have been approved. So we are still awaiting, like I stated, the bonding. So the recommendation before the Planning and Zoning Commission was to approve it with the following conditions that letters of credit needed to be submitted and then the subdivision improvements agreement executed and provide a check for fees in lieu of and the construction drawings needed to approve prior to the commissioner hearing. And as I stated, the, the construction drawings have been approved. So I prepared a resolution before you, Mr. Chairman and Board of County Commissioners that states that it is approved conditioned upon the letters of credit being uh, submitted prior to the recordation of the plat, execution of a subdivision improvement agreement before the recordation of the plat, and the check of fees in lieu of is also submitted prior to the recordation of the plat. As per state statute, we have to have financial guarantee prior to a recordation of a plat. So with these conditions, Mr. Chairman, I feel confident that um, we can approve this today. We're try we put these conditions in here today so that the when they do get that bonding in place, that they don't have to wait till the next commissioner meeting to get started on construction. As we know in Wyoming, we have this short construction season and they would like to get this constructed this year. As far as the subdivision improvements agreement goes, when I submitted the packet, it had the incorrect amount on there. I had spoken with the Fillinghams. Uh, what they had in there was that they were gonna put a phone line in and they were bonded for the phone line. And when I spoke with them, they did not want that as a part of the subdivision improvements agreement. And so I have changed the amount as per uh, removing that phone line out of there. And what you see on there is what it should be is the total improvements agreement is $1,588,657.21. 31 cents, 21 cents. And so that's what, Mr. Chairman, uh, what I'm asking for today is approval of the final plat as per this resolution. And then the subdivision improvements agreement also executed. We can go ahead and sign that improvements agreement. Um, I have spoken with Rock Springs National Bank who is doing the bonding for this. And we hopefully with the, within the next few weeks here uh, do receive that bonding. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Eric. Do uh, are there any questions for Eric from the commissioners? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Johnson. Uh, I'd like to know whether Randy and Lane are all right with the conditions uh, that are improved, uh, that have been uh, included in this uh, resolution. And also if they have any comments about the subdivision improvements agreement, any problems with that? Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Floor is open. Uh, Randy or Lane? Yeah, we're comfortable with uh, what's been presented. And I don't think we have any comments. Thank you, Lane. Does that answer your questions, Commissioner Johnson? Yes, it does. Thank you. Any other questions for uh, either the owners this time or Eric? Without uh, any further questions, I think first order is to open this up for a public hearing. Eric, is that correct? The final plot? That is correct. We'd have a uh, open the floor up for a public hearing for the final plot, which is a recommendation 20-08-0-01. Zero zero um, open for a public hearing. Floor is now open. Anything, Tim? No comments, no. Eric, while we're waiting for public comment, of course, uh, next we'll be approving the resolution. Final plat. Yes, yeah. and Mr. Chairman, we also need in that motion to authorize chairman to sign the subdivision improvements agreement. To authorize to sign what? 
the subdivision improvement agreement. Okay. And Mr. Chairman, I have provided a copy to Sally. Good. Thank you. Any other comments, Tim? I'll close the public hearing for the uh, resolution 20-08-0-01, the final plat. Um, our next uh, order for action will be to approve the final plat uh, Resolution, resolution 20-08-00, I'm sorry, Z O-0. And um, also to authorize the chairman to sign the subdivision improvement agreement. Is that right, Gary? Eric? That is correct. Okay. I'll... Mr. Chairman. Mr. Johnson. I'd make a motion that we approve the resolution 20-08 dash ZO dash zero one and also approve the subdivision improvement agreement and authorize the chairman to sign the uh, subdivision improvement agreement. Thank you. We have a motion by Commissioner Johnson. Is there a second? A we'll second. We have a second by Commissioner Lloyd. Any further discussion, commissioners? Do we need to mention the uh, conditions in there or is that assumed? It's part of the resolution. It's part of the resolution. So thank you, though. Any other discussion, commissioners? <clears throat> With that, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Eric. Uh, thank you, uh, gentlemen, for joining us this morning and for this. And uh, we'll move on now to our next order of business. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you and good luck and hope it all works out well. Thank you. All right. Next up is uh, county resident concerns. Um, I'll open up the uh, meeting for county residents concerned concerns at this time. Floor is now open. Mr. Chairman, I have uh, a couple comments that came in through the public comments email. Very good. Um, the first is from ML Boren, 58 at gmail.com and uh, didn't leave a name, but the comment is Sweetwater County used to run very well with three commissioners. Let's go back to three that will save money. Um, the second is from Joseph Quiros. It says, now is not the time to spend money. Okay, regarding the Lagoon project. Uh, now is not the time to spend money on this project. Not too long ago, the county budget was reduced and cuts were made to several departments. My support would be for the county departments. Thank you, Tim. Two comments. Floor is still open for public comment. <clears throat> Floor is still open for public comment. Anything, Tim? Okay, I'll close the portion of public comment and we'll move on to our next item, which is commissioner comments and reports. And good morning, commissioners again. And first up, Commissioner Johnson, floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Uh, first, I have the uh, public works report for August 18th. Buildings dude training went, went very well last week and we will be trying out the software and training mode for the next two weeks to work the bugs out of this process. Full, implement full implementation across facility maintenance, custodial and parks and rec will begin August 31st. Engineering, SNL indus industrial is striping the mine roads west of Green River and completing all of the handwork in, around, in and around the Rock Springs this week. Road and bridge, the CMAC and dust control projects were completed yesterday. Crews are finishing up placing base course on cattle, uh, cattle drive, CR number 1249, North Rock Springs and Farson Lower Cutoff Road, CR number eight from State Highway 28 North. Crews are also getting the other roads ready for the busy hunting season. Fleet maintenance, the two fleet maintenance personnel have been working extremely hard over the summer to keep everything in, work, in working order and on the road. They have seen everything imaginable this year, taking care of the fleet of over 183 licensed vehicles. Uh, included in the report, which you, now, which you have, are a couple pictures that uh, Gene has provided. Uh, one of the other items that I, I did at my request, I had a meeting with uh, Marty Carollo on All West, and as a result of that, that's why they're on the agenda today. What I asked Marty to do after a much uh, a long discussion I had with him as to the feedback I was getting from uh, people within uh, the community relative to what All West was doing, I suggested that it would be in the best interest of the, of the county if uh, All West would come before us and tell us what they're doing and what the ramifications of that were going to be. And Marty, as usual, uh, was very willing to do that. And as a result, he's on the agenda today. Uh, on the 20th, which is uh, later this week, I will be in Kemmer uh, in the CLG meeting there. We'll continue to discuss the issues that uh, continue to come up with our testimonies, both Mr. Connolly and myself, as to the Public Service Commission uh, relative to the power plants in both Lincoln County and Sweetwater County. So that's all I have today. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Is any questions? Just a comment, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Smith. Uh, last two weeks ago, I had the opportunity to uh, head down towards Ramsey Ranch and saw one of our county workers out there doing some grading. And I tell you what, the part of the road, the county road that uh, had not been graded was rough and difficult, but he was doing an awesome job. I was so happy to see him and get on past him. And uh, it was it was excellent. So. Thank you to that department and uh, those who are working down there. We really appreciate all that they do. Thank you, Commissioner Smith, and that'll be passed on, I'm sure. We, uh, all those guys in that department out there have got a lot of roads to do, and our roads are in better shape than most other places in the uh, state, so that's passed on. Thank you. Any other comments? I just follow up with what Jeff just said. That's what uh, Gene had indicated in his uh, report, that road on the Ramsey Road and the then goes up uh, from the Ramsey Ranch on top of Little Mountain is extremely important to the hunters in uh, in the county. So uh, yeah. it's good that uh, Jeff was out there and noticed that and uh, knew the difference between a well graded road and one that's not. <laughs> Thank you. And all, any other comments, Commissioner, for Commissioner Johnson? Uh, one quick one for me is I appreciate you uh, getting a hold of or visiting with Marty and getting him on the agenda today for All West. Mr. Johnson, that's, uh, uh, we're all looking forward to hearing that. So thank you. Up next, I guess, is myself uh, reports. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson first. And then myself, uh, liaison work, of course, uh, still going uh, much by technology and that type of thing. So a few highlights, of course, this time of the year, the biggest highlights are fire and that type of thing. We've had a few, but the county for the most part, other than Clay Basin uh, has scathed the uh, any major fires so far, uh, any further major fires, because that was pretty major, did burn into the uh, line that, or across the state line, that type of thing. Um, we did uh, ha offer some assistance and gave some assistance to Carbon County on their fire that was over near uh, the uh, county line. Uh, we had a crew over there to help with that, and that was put to rest uh, uh, very quickly before it got really, really huge. 
Uh, as we all know, uh, smoke in the air and that type of thing is a lot of that's coming out of Colorado. Um, all the, uh, my understanding is it's beetle wood, dead beetle wood that's being uh, caught on fire and uh, burning crazily throughout the uh, quite a bit of Colorado. And, and of course, Colorado's resources are, are maxed out and basically to the point to uh, where they put out a call and uh, um, with doing some further checking and that type of thing, commissioners, we do have a crew assisting in Colorado and providing uh, more or less uh, um, protection from fire spreading and actually being in there battling it. So we do have a crew down there and uh, hopefully they'll be back here shortly, but they're assisting. So uh, that type of thing. Also, just so everybody knows, there are fire restrictions on Ashley and BLM land and they're pretty, uh, they mirror each other on the restrictions uh, for fires and that type of thing. So we have those in place now in the county uh, on those two uh, um, federal properties, BLM, as well as uh, um, the Ashley. Also to report the other thing is we did have a uh, communities uh, protecting the green yesterday. I will send out to you the water reports, but a couple highlights on that is uh, Lake Mead is uh, at 1,084 feet as of August 14th, which is 140, approximately 145 feet below full pool. So um, they're uh, nearing uh, um, their usage. Lake Powell, as of August 13th, is at 3,603 and a half feet, which is 96.45 feet below full pool. It's down, Lake Powell is down 7.59 feet from this time last year. Uh, rivers feeding Lake Powell, of course, are running at 44.59 uh, feet per second as of August 14th. Um, of course, above Lake Powell, up this way, there's 28 tracked reservoirs, and all of them are combined are at 79.18% capacity. Fontenelle is currently running at 6,502 as of August 13, and the upper green snowpack is at 93% of medium as of August 14. I think the big issue that's uh, coming around, oh, and, and Flaming Gorge is currently at 6,000. Uh, 28 as of uh, August 13th, which is approximately 86.4% full pool, which means it's about 12 foot below full pool. Um, and uh, water level is down almost about five and a half feet from a year ago. And rivers are uh, feeding Flaming Gorge at 75.82% uh, of, of what it was a year ago. Uh, big information, I think that's uh, everybody's following right now is the uh, Lake Powell pipeline in Utah, uh, which is to divert uh, out of Lake Powell 80, 86,000 acre feet of water. It's in its draft EIS at this point in time. And uh, they're uh, continuing. This project involves uh, Moab counties, Kokono counties in Arizona, as well as Kane and Washington counties in Utah. And of course, uh, it's being watched very closely by many conservation groups, privately funded as well as public. And I fully anticipate when things, uh, when the um, EIS and the record of decision and that type of thing comes out, we'll see, uh, I, I fully expect some uh, lawsuits to be filed by private people uh, believing there's not enough water presently in the green to uh, handle such a diversion. So. Uh, with that, uh, lays on work and everything, uh, that concludes my report, and I'll stand for any questions. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Johnson. Not a question, but uh, it's part of my testimony in front of the Public Service Commission uh, pointed out to them that in August, when they start talking about regional haze coming from the power plants, my testimony was they should, they should look and see what's happening in, the, in our forests. And it's another example of what's going on. If you look up towards the Wind Rivers and you see all that haze, regional haze, it's uh, from the forest fires, as you indicated. And some of that is coming over the Wasatch Front out of Utah because they have quite a few fires down in Utah also. But uh, the power plants get the blame for that. And my testimony was that it's not all the power, power plants. It's mainly the forest fires that are occurring uh, throughout the West. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. 
point well taken and very, uh, very accurate. Thank you. Any other questions? Up next will be Commissioner Smith. Good morning, Commissioner Smith. Morning, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll start with um, with uh, liaison work at the airport. And uh, many of you have uh, spoken with uh, Devin out at the airport. I received good news that um, um, funding is gonna be in place. He's received more funding for our, our $18 million total project for the new airport terminal. Uh, the good news is that it looks like, uh, if all goes well, 17.148 million of that will come from outside sources. And the uh, local match will be 1.35 million of that uh, 850,000 would come from the county. So to build a new $18 million terminal, it looks like uh, the county would need to, to come up with uh, 850,000. So um, excellent work on his part. And it's a it's a ever moving, ever changing project and appreciate all the work that he's doing there with that as well. So um, thank you to him. Um, hospital, I continue to be impressed with the hospital and how that they are handling the COVID and just continually working through the opportunities and programs, uh, the grant money that is available out there um, and the success that they're having compared to, especially to other counties, other entities that are, are working. So uh, kudos to them. They uh, continue to um, have special meetings when needed so that they can allocate the money and get uh, contracts approved and things moving forward. Uh, as we know, much of that CARES Act money has to be spent by the end of December. And so seeing them continue to put in the hard um, work that they have to, to make that work and make our hospital better. Um, it's just kudos to them. I really appreciate all that they're doing. Uh, also working on the abandoned vehicle lots, got an update for you um, from, uh, from John Liggett and uh, his wife. Uh, appreciate all that they're doing as well. And um, they've got of 95 cars and trucks, 46 motor homes, 17 campers, and 10 miscellaneous trailers and things, utility trailers, that kind of thing that are out there. So way more than um, they would hope to ever have out there. And I think this case, the same is true for us as well as a county. So um, John DeLeon's been working with them and uh, trying to get through the process. They've sent everything that they need on to the sheriff's office to get it accounted for and um, so that they can start moving forward with it. So real happy with their work as well. And appreciate what they're doing, and John and the rest of the crew as well. So um, progress is being made there. It's not quite finished yet, but uh, a lot more progress than some, as I mentioned in an email yesterday, that is going much more quickly than some other projects I'm working on. And many of you can guess what one in particular is. So uh, and finally, I, th I guess uh, it's election day. I'd say get out and vote. Uh, don't vote for me today. I'm not on the ballot. Um, but if you're not going to vote for me, still get out and vote. And um, have your voice heard. It's an important time. So uh, best of luck to our candidates who are running, uh, many, a couple of who are sitting here, but uh, best of luck all around and do exercise your right. It's a great country we live in and um, we have that opportunity. So please get out and vote. Take that time today to do it. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Any questions for Commissioner Smith? With no questions, I'll, I'll make a comment though. Uh, with regard to today being a uh, election day, I believe this is also the bicentennial year, I think, of women's rights, if I'm not, and Lauren's shaking her head. So, were you going to cover any of this? I hope I'm not stealing any of your thunder. No, I hadn't planned on it. All right, thank you. But anyhow, it's bicentennial for women's rights. So, it's a huge, huge, not only year, but I think uh, elections, whether it's general or primary. But the other piece of the caveat, and I, I gotta say this with a grin on my face, is well, you might know this, is years prior to 100 years ago, a woman who came out here to Wyoming from Indiana was walking down the streets of one of our major cities in Wyoming and walked by a polling place and walked in and voted and nobody said a word to her. 50 years ago in Laramie, Wyoming, a young lady did that. And there's a statue there in Wyoming recognizing that. And I believe her name is a Swain. Is it Linda? But anyhow, 
That's a little piece of history to add on to what's going on today. Wally, you remember all that? Yeah, I do. I was walking down the street that same day and uh, I, I noticed her and as she walked in, I, I wished her well. <laughs> Good deal, because nobody's tried to stop her, I guess. And, and when I found that out, I thought, wow, what a day, what a day. So anyway, uh, Lauren, I do hope I didn't steal your thunder because I know uh, you keep an eye on those things. But thank you, Wally. Thank you, Jeff. And great day for women's rights. You just got to really be proud of that. Up next, Commissioner Shanefield. Thank you. Sure. Um, liaison work is going well. Um, the museum director position is open. It's posted online at sweetwatermuseum.org. Uh, Mr. Mead with the museum is stepping up since Bree left and helping out. Um, they are almost completely out of the old storage facility, which is a huge win, um, and into the new building. So I just wanted to tell Gene and his employees, thank you again for that. They're very excited. Um, the museum board is also about to begin a review of all of their policies and procedures. Um, and so I will be working with um, Deputy County Attorney DeLeon um, when we get to it or if we have any questions around that. Um, Golden Hour Senior Center is doing busy, uh, good. They're very busy. The, their fiscal year ends at the end of September and it looks like their funding is going to be okay for this year. Um, they're taking the hardest hit in fundraising, um, which Jackie said is pretty much non-existent right now. Um, they do have a fundraiser drive-through dinner plan for September, um, and I will get more information out about that when it gets a little bit closer. Um, they also just elected a new board president, so congratulations, Stacey Nelson. Um, they've been really busy and have continued to serve 3,500 to 4,000 meals each month. Um, and they've also had some turnover in staff with the retirement and another staff leaving um, to go back to school. They're gonna have two open positions um, that they're actually going to not fill um, due to funding cuts and the environment that we have. So I, I just wanted to commend them on choosing to, you know, to do more with less and understand that it, it does create a lot of stress on employees and the services, but um, we really appreciate the services that they're providing throughout the community and are continuing to provide um, with less staff. Um, for our grants um, department, Christina has submitted the CARES Act application to the Department of Health um, that will assist Sweetwater County residents with rent and utility assistance. Um, we're, she's working on a new grant application with the Clerk of District Court and the County Attorney's Office to assist with COVID costs for jury trials that are coming up. And She's working on a second grant application for Southwest Counseling um, for COVID surveillance testing and retrofits um, in the Jonah building to increase social distancing. Uh, she has also been working with auditors who are testing Sweetwater County's federal homeland security grants and payment um, in lieu of funding for compliance. So PILT funding um, for the compliance around it. Um, economic development. Um, met with Eric to work with an um, economic development grant to assess the um, impacts related to Jim Bridger's retiring unit. Um, this grant, oh, this is for Christina as well. This grant's going to be timed to incorporate the information from Middle Baxter Road Industrial Development Project also. Um, I also had a meeting last week with um, Mr. Windling and the Town of Walmsutter, the Joint Communication Board, the Airport, the Sheriff, and Sweetwater County Fire um, around Gateway South Industrial Siting Project. So it looks like the total impact fees available for Gateway South for both Carbon and Sweetwater County are going to be around 6.19 million. Um, we're planning on meeting with Carbon County August 25th. And Eric is working on getting the preliminary, the final preliminary numbers. Um, it, probably today and tomorrow. Um, economic development, Kayla's been working with Ashley Harpstreet, um, who's the executive director for the Wyoming Taxpayers Association and a good friend of mine. She's gonna be coming um, through Rock Springs um, on the 27th and is going to be doing an overview of the fiscal landscape um, and tax reform for us. And that will be from 10 to 11.30 a.m. Um, the Rock Springs City Council Chambers. 
And I've also been working the Connect Wyoming Broadband Initiative. Um, last Friday, the Wyoming Business Council approved a funding for 37 projects through 10 different service providers throughout the state for broadband development. Um, this is at the tune of about $75 million through CARES funding. So these are some big projects that are really going to make a huge difference to our state um, across the entire state. It's going to be big for our small businesses and our ranchers and farmers and our students um, to bring everything up to higher level um, internet um, and connectivity. And the last thing that I wanted to bring up today is something that um, we've really been exploring at Simplot and working through what's being referred to as COVID fatigue. So there's a lot of people that are struggling. There's a lot of um, deaths. There's been some suicides. Um, there's a lot of people that are really having a hard time right now. So I just wanted to urge everyone to reach out to a friend, reach out to a coworker, maybe somebody that you may not typically reach out to and you may help them get through a tough day and during this tough time. So that's all I have. If there's any questions. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Any questions? Thank you. And up with final report, uh, Commissioner Lloyd. All right, I'll start with liaison work and um, Starbus. We we did meet last week. Um, very and just, um, but we are having an emergency meeting this week um, to discuss some of the route issues we're having now um, that we've gone back to the fixed route system based upon the limited number of people on the bus and looking to reinstate the rates. So we will be um, meeting as a board to discuss that, um, but they continue to do well. Um, a library, we had a board meeting last night and um, Jason and his crew continue to do a great job, especially in the area of outreach and programming in their library in uh, a very difficult and changing time. So um, 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 Southwest Counseling, um, been in contact with Linda about a couple of issues, buildings, and then she's still awaiting um, what the cuts are exactly that they're talking about in the mental health area. We know it's at least 10%, if not more, but every time they go to have a meeting, the meeting gets canceled. So at this point, she knows there's cuts, but doesn't know where they're coming. So they're continuing to work through that. Um, next uh, meeting, we'll be ready to roll with our first strategic planning workshop after our meeting, if that's okay, if um, as we've talked, uh, we thought it would be good to start there in September. We'll move forward with that. I think we have received all of the department heads and elected officials um, uh, comments and thought processes on there. And I do appreciate them for all their work and really being able to come up with a process to help us plan. And I, I there's a lot of tricks and things, things that will make it difficult, but I do think it's good that we get some concepts rolling. Um, um, just want to thank a couple of people, uh, the custodial workers, um, you know, we've talked about them during the COVID time, but the building continually looks great and um, they're doing a great job in maintaining and ensuring the safety of the building in this COVID crisis. So thanks to the custodial crew. Um, <laughs> what's that? Okay. And then also um, a thanks to uh, Cindy and her crew at the, um, at the elections. Um, it's a big job to get the elections up and going. And I appreciate all their efforts and work in making it um, happen today and, um, and congratulate them on their works and efforts. And I'll give them congratulations next time seeing how it goes today. But uh, but uh, but a big thanks to them for all their work. Um, but I also want to just echo something Jeff said, get out and vote today. Um, I already did uh, first thing this morning. And um, um, and uh, just um, I, and I also want to wish luck to our two folks that are running today. Um, but I also want to wish luck to all of our, um, everyone that's put their name in the hat. Um, being a public servant and an elected official is definitely not all as easy as it looks and as um, all it's cracked out to be. There's a lot of work, effort, good times and bad times. So anyone that's willing to put their name in that hat and throw it into the ring deserves kudos, no matter what their efforts are at the end of the day. So I do appreciate them and I do appreciate and hope for a good turnout in this, in this election today. Obviously, like Jeff said, this is your chance to voice and and have a voice. So please get out and and um, and vote today. Um, and then outside of that, um, have met with various department heads and elected officials over the last couple of weeks. Met with Assessor Devis, uh, Treasurer Slaughter, um, um, uh, direct, um, Grants Director um, Christina Marshall. I've met with Gary McLean out of HR. Met with uh, jo had a great talk with John DeLeon and Lauren joined us for that yesterday on some statute questions I had on various things. 
met with Clerk Lane, met with um, Bonnie Berry, uh, the accounting manager, and Devin Brubaker, the airport director, just to name a few, and then a lot of constituent calls in the last week. So um, I do appreciate everyone for um, voicing and, um, and being there. So, um, and I guess, you know, since I'm, I'm in the kudo mood today, I want to throw one last kudo to someone we've never, I've never given kudos to, but deserves it, and that's Sally. Um, whenever I need anything, she's always there to give me information and help. Um, she does a lot for us, and I just think that some, every once in a while, everyone deserves a kudo, and she deserves one a lot more than I've ever given her one, but she thanks to Sally for all she's done. So that's my report um, for the week. Is there any questions for me? Commissioners, any questions for Commissioner Lloyd? Yeah, I, I think his comments about Sally uh, are over, overblown. She she just thought <laughs> Jeff and I in our in our offices, you know, so I don't know whether that's deserved. <laughs> Knew that was coming. Knew that was coming. Anyhow, thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Well noted. I would wait till after the votes happened today to make comments like that. <laughs> <laughs> Good point, Roy. <laughs> any other any other comments or questions for Commissioner Law on his report? Good report. You did bring up a couple things. If I might comment, uh, first of all, when you talked about the um, Southwest counseling and their uh, receiving 10% cuts from the state. Uh, based on our commissioner's call this week uh, from Rennie McKay, the governor's seriously looking at the next level, uh, which is another 10% cut. So uh, if that's to take place, I'm sure we could hear about it this week or first part of next week. So uh, I truly believe that's on the plate and uh, probably gonna happen sooner than later and that type of thing. But then also for you as commissioners know, Monday they have joint revenue meeting and uh, I'll be testifying, I'll get some information from Dave Davis as to regard to some of the, uh, when they're talking, they're talking about additional tax revenue and those types of things, that revenue meeting and uh, with some of the things that are occurring, uh, especially with the LISRA and those types of things. Um, we, the, the legislature's gotta realize they're gonna have to do something to help uh, backfill the loss of revenue for counties, cities, and towns. So I'll be testifying. It'll be a short testimony because it will be on Zoom through uh, the Legislative uh, Revenue Committee and that type of thing. But uh, we, we are beginning through the County Commission Association working on uh, things like that. And then of course, the next thing that comes really quickly to mind is the uh, next uh, version of the CARES Act money, which I believe references the HEROES. It's tied up right now at the federal level between in Congress. Uh, there's uh, in that there is language to uh, make the present 1.25 million more flexible so that the, through some supportive way that uh, will help small towns, cities and counties get some the, um, money out of that. So hopefully there's some flexibility that will come out of that. Uh, fourth CARES Act, as well as in that Fourth CARES Act, there's more uh, money for city, towns, and counties as well. So, uh, as much as it's very hard to recover any revenue right now under the previous release to CARES Act, uh, there may be some hope in the future if uh, if our uh, federal legislators can, congressional people can, sit down and start thinking about uh, truly what's good for. Uh, all the individuals uh, rather than just a few. So with that, uh, any other comments, commissioners, for fish, commissioner comments? Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Johnson. Just following up with what you just said, and I'd urge you when you're on that conference call to keep this in mind. There, there are counties and there are cities and towns that have seen this coming and have done great things as to reducing their costs. And now the state, and the state, in my opinion, has done nothing in the past uh, to see this coming. And now uh, the first place they look is to cut cities, towns, and counties. And uh, it, it, I think it's unfortunate. There's, it's hindsight to, to say the things I'm saying, but they should have been doing this and maybe we'd be in better shape today than, than we are as far as the state goes. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. You're exactly right. In fact, uh, in our uh, committee call yesterday, uh, our uh, executive director, Jeremiah Ryman, brought up the fact that he wants to talk about what Sweetwater County has done over the years to 
have some foresight. And it's exactly what we, you, everybody else has been talking about of what we've done to not grow government, but to uh, narrow government down and be more efficient and effective. So, so he's been reading our data we've been sending to him and talking about it. And, and I think uh, if the opportunity presents it for him, um, I think it, it'll be mentioned that there are counties out there doing just what you said, but the state is not. And that's obvious when you uh, observe the lack of willingness to look at uh, ways to uh, generate new revenue that, that uh, will help impact cities, towns, and counties. So thank you for your comments. Uh, certainly we'll do that. Thank you. Anything else during commissioner comments? With that, uh, commissioners, our first agenda item is scheduled for 940, so it's 920, so let's take a 10, 15 minute break. Let's be back here and operational at 935, please.
Did you come over and say hi, Roy? Okay, welcome back, commissioners. I believe we're back. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting back to order and we'll start our business for the day. First up is, is um, tab C, which I brought in from the last meeting, which is basically a, a lagoon, the lagoon project suspension discussion and potential action um, brought in from our last meeting that I notified all the commissioners to be here for an action item. So at this point in time, basically to uh, uh, what I was sensing is uh, to uh, authorize the director of public chair works and county attorney to prepare a letter of suspension and present it for board approval at the next meeting. So uh, that's the agenda item and uh, commissioners at this point in time is uh, questions or anything along that line. Mr. Chairman, I, I'd like to hear from uh... Uh, our deputy county attorney. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. De Leon. Sure. Um, uh, Commissioner Johnson, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, so just, just to be clear, um, this, this item was put on the agenda for today. Um, and as the chairman identified, the discussion was to put it, uh, on the agenda for a discussion and potential action in terms of pausing the the uh, lagoon project, and we, we've had some discussions about uh, uh, about how to proceed. And I just want to be clear that there is a contract with the architect in this case, uh, and in that contract, um, and the board since since the commission, since the county has entered, already entered into this contract, uh, that can't be, uh, um, can't go back on that decision. Um, that was an appropriate decision. The only, um, the options available to the commission are to follow the contract that is in place. That contract that is in place has a termination or suspension clause uh, and that termination or suspension clause um, requires uh, before there would be a suspension that there would have to be notice provided to the architect. And so if, if the board uh, does consider uh, some action today, it would be uh, to follow that contract, it would be for staff um, and I assume that would involve um, Jean and um, myself to look at providing a written documentation, written notice, uh, if the board were to choose to look at a suspension. Um, and that notice would then be presented to the commission uh, at the next uh, uh, board meeting. And so again, just to, just to re reiterate, to follow the contract, um, any any uh, a written notice is required in advance. Um, there are a few things that I think, uh, again, staff, uh, probably Gene would want to just clarify or what are the, um, what is entailed specifically uh, with a, a suspension and how, how does that look for the architect? What, uh, what costs, if any, are associated with uh, both suspension and termination? But based on the notice that was provided last week, I think the only thing on the table isn't termination. Uh, I think the, the language used was that a pause uh, was being considered. Uh, and therefore, I think the, the commission today would be in discussion of the suspension component of the contract. Thank you, John Dillon. Any other questions for the attorney, Mr. John, Commissioner Johnson? Yeah, I, I just like uh, one other question, John. Uh, you know, I, I think that the, the issue still is, has never been divided between the two buildings. Uh, from the architect's standpoint, would it be possible to suspend only the portion of that. For example, my view would be uh, to suspend the, uh, the, uh, the fire 
portion of, portion of that facility. Is that a possibility per the contract that we have with the contract or with the architect? Mr. Johnson, Mr. Chairman, uh, absolutely it is. Um, the suspension can come in either form. And so it would be up to you as commissioners to uh, direct staff to, to um, organize a notice of suspension as you deemed fit. And you're absolutely right. You know, when you're talking about, uh, I think um, Gene would have more information on some of the details, but uh, you know, when you look at potentially cutting the cost in half, when you look at potentially the uh, some of the costs associated that could be recovered through the grant, um, it, when you get down to those final numbers, it's it's a su substantial difference, and those are things I think for the substantively for the commission to consider. Thank you, John. The reason I asked the reason I asked that question is I th I think that there's a possible uh, unanimous uh, opinion of this commission. I could be guessing wrong that definitely there's there's no consideration to go forward with the full the full uh, both buildings. So I, that's why I asked that. And I think by making that decision, we would uh, uh, curtail any continuing continuing costs that the architects might be going through uh, with one of the buildings that uh, would be unnecessary at this point in time until some future date or whenever. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Other questions, commissioners? Mr. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Sorry, Laura, you can go ahead and go first. Commissioner Shaneville, please. Um, Mr. DeLeon, how much notice is there involved in the contract um, that we currently have? Commissioner Shanefeld, uh, it, there is a seven day notice requirement. So it has to be written uh, and then it is a seven day notice requirement. So um, what, what that means is whatever um, decisions the commission were to make. So for example, if the commission were to make a decision to um, suspend half of the um, one building, not the other, then staff would then prepare that notice, have the discussions with the architect, um, seeing what that would uh, entail. Uh, that would be presented at the next meeting. And then once the board and or chairman were to sign that, then seven days from that point, the, the, the project would be suspended as directed by the commission. Does that answer your question, Lauren? It does. Um, I also, I guess, in, if we were to choose to move forward with suspending, um, I would think that we could authorize the chairman to sign and move forward today instead of having to wait until the next meeting. I don't want to continue to drag all of this on and, and continue to waste our staff's time um, as well as architect time if we do choose to pause um, on it. So that, that's my opinion. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Ligurski. Uh, can I speak up on two two topics I think that need to be clarified? Sure. Um, depending on if we're talking about putting a pause on things, um, I don't believe, and I, we, John and I would need to look at the contract on this. If we drop one of the buildings, I don't think that would require anything. That's just a change of scope of the original contract. That's not a suspension of anything. That's a change of scope in the contract. We need to go through that and vet that with the contract, but that's how I read it. Um, the other thing that is as a point um, to Commissioner um, Shanefield is we're very close to having everything done. And I think pausing the project at this point and then picking it up at a later date would be a disservice to what staff has put in and also the money that we put in because it would actually cost us more money to start the project back up and go forward. Right now we have, oh, 30 to 35 people working on this. And if you pause it for two months, six months, eight months, whatever you guys decide, and you try to get all those guys, all those individuals on the same page, going in the same direction again, that is gonna cost more money. And we need to keep that in mind. Um, we're very close to having construction drawings done. There are some final permitting that needs to be done. I don't believe that is a waste of my time if that's the staff we're talking about. 
um, but it would be a way to be able to put a final project on pause and having everything completely done. Thank you, Gene. Uh, any questions on for Gene on that, commissioners? Yeah, I Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Johnson, you you rang first. Uh, just a question, Gene. You, you deal with the architects. Uh, are you saying that it would be no benefit to the architects if we were to, uh, well, maybe what you're saying is that if, if we go forward with uh, with uh, proposal for bids on both buildings, uh, that that doesn't enter into it. But as far as the architects, the, the you're talking about both buildings would be done as far as the architects are uh, in, uh, involved. Is that correct? Correct. The original contract was for both buildings, all the land associated with. So that's what we've been working forward to um, for the last year plus. Um, so separating them out is a possibility. But right now, what my recommendation would be to be is to finish both buildings. And if you choose to pause at that point, we can divide it out. But don't stop the project right now as far as the design goes, because that will be... Um, That'll have consequences down the road. Thanks, Gene. Thank you. Questions, Commissioner, so far? Well, you had some before, Lauren. Yeah. Um, and the first question, my first couple of questions are probably for John. Gene may be able to help out with it or probably could. Our current contract, if I remember right, is really for two things to complete the building plans and to complete the bidding process. Am I correct? There's actually three components to that. Well, there's actually gotcha. more subcomponents, but if you look at it as three different components, one is to complete the plans and all the permitting associated with it. The other is the bidding. And then the, uh, the final one is the construction management portion of the contract. Okay. And at this point, um, Gene, my question, and this is a question for you, Gene, is you s give me an estimate of how close you think they are to have that building renderings done. The, uh, we're at had planned on sending these to the contractors on August 25th. So that's how close we're done to being done. Literally a week away. Okay, of, of having the final drawings. Final drawings done. Um, some of the permitting will still lag because we're doing permitting through the BLM and other things for some minor storm sewer stuff. Uh, but other than that, everything drawing wise will be done. I um, And then as far as the bidding process, um, have they gone out for bids already? No, you cannot go out for bids without uh, completed construction drawings. But the okay. plan was to let them to the contractors on August 25th, collect bids on September 15th, and send them to you guys for approval on October 6th. So I guess my question then, are we at a point then where we could finish the building drawings? Because to me, I'd hate to put a pause on it before we had the completed drawings. Because like, I, I agree with you, that it'd be hard to say, hey, we're gonna go back and finish these drawings six to eight months later. It would be easier to shelf them once they were complete than go back to them if they were complete, in my opinion. Would you agree with that? I would agree. The only thing that you would, you would run the risk of is if there is a major um, code um, redo in plumbing or building code or something like that, if we postpone it too, one, too, too many years, I'm talking mm -hmm. okay. then have to go back and look through those and make them a code compliance review and possibly okay. change the drawings. Are we... <laughs> Are we at a point, Gene, to um, <clears> the <throat> contractually we could provide the notice to stop the bidding from going out and incurring that eighty thousand dollar cost in our contract? Um, I, I think we could. That that is one of the clarifications that we need to talk about because if next meeting, no, because it'll be September eighth is when that uh, mm -hmm. actual seven days will take effect. I'm going to marinate, then I'm going to come back to a few more. But Gene and John, thank you so much. For Other questions for Gene, Commissioner, or John? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I uh, just wanted to, Gene, uh, can you remind us where we're at uh, dollar-wise, what we've put into this uh, so far? And uh, 1.2. I don't I, I can look up an exact number, but it's about 1.2 million. And if we paused today, didn't finish the drawings, does it save us any money? Uh, not very little, because the problem with that is 
we have to pay the contractor up through what he has completed. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what that exactly is because I got a billing two weeks ago. So, you know, we're only one week away from having the drawings done. Yeah. So I, my comment, I guess, would be what I've said before. We've started this process. We've voted to do this portion of the process. I, I don't, I don't feel as though it's obligating us to anything. Uh, I agree that financial times are difficult and perhaps uh, building this building is not the time right now to do that. But I think that we need to finish what we started. And I've, I've, I've said that from the beginning that we need to finish this portion of the process. And I'm, I'm a little disappointed too. We didn't go out and find out about at least the grant uh, money and, uh, and funding. That would have been something else as, as well to find out. Uh, like I look at the hospital and the, the millions of dollars that they've received in grant money um, to take care of projects. And so I think it's a missed opportunity. So two steps there. Certainly, uh, we need to finish the drawings. That's ridiculous to be a week away. It's not going to save us anything. And in the long run, it will save it will cost us a lot more to do that. And then secondly, um, I, I think perhaps we should revisit the uh, revisit the funding. And I think that's something that we should have looked at as well and taken the opportunity to, uh, to look at and have our staff do. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, commissioners? So Gene, just for me, why other commissioners think a little bit. So the drawings would complete a phase of the project and it'd be a good point of, uh, pause is that what i'm hearing in, in the grand scheme of things it'd be the best place to if you want to pause the project um, without bidding it yes very good All right. thank you very much and that and, and to uh, regard to commissioner smith regarding the uh um lo the loans and that type of thing i i think that's something we can go back and and look at it another time but i think for now uh We'll, we'll stay status quo for that unless someone feels differently. All right. Any other questions for? Can I, can I add something to that? Sure. sure. I guess uh, last meeting I was a little confused and that's partially my fault for not asking enough questions, but with the additional funding, um, Commissioner Smith brought up the hospital. Um, if you look at what Devin Brubaker has been able to do looking for additional funding out at the airport, I mean, an $18 million project that's going to cost the county $800,000. I'm not saying I can do that, but you guys pay me to do a job. And that is not a burden for me to go out and look for extra money and do those things and to try to find out so that we can get this project completed with the least cost possible to the county. Thank you, Gene. Appreciate Mr. it. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Johnson. I, I couldn't agree more with what Jeff just said about that financing. I, I, and, and Gene also is saying the same thing. We ask staff to do these things. We hire great staff, they do their job, and then all of a sudden we stop it. I think that was one of the biggest blunders we've made since I've been a commissioner. It would have been cost us nothing, nothing to find out what, what funding might be available and what the cost of that funding might be. But instead of even looking at what it was, we stopped it. And I think we I agree with you, Jeff. If we want to revisit something, we should re revisit that decision. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. The, the other thing that we need to think is if, if we push out the bid date um, to something in the future, that's not really a pause. That's not a, it's, it's more of a contractual thing that we just need to push it out within reason. You know, let's say you guys want to postpone this until January or something like that for a bid in April. Um, or, you know, for a start date in April or something like that. That's more of a contractual thing that we can deal with with the architecture. I don't think that's a pause thing that requires something from you guys. Thank you, Gene. Very much. Other questions, commissioners? Other questions? What's the commissioner's pleasure? Uh, can I go back and just ask a question, if possible? Sure. Sure. Um, I guess, Gene, just going back, I guess, um, just as I sit here, um, the big thing for me is, like I said, I, I am pro finishing the plans. To me, I've never not wanted to finish the plans because the, even last meeting, we were, you know, we were within striking distance of being done, and it made no sense to stop drawing at that point and move forward. 
Um, the, the bidding process, if we were to if we were to put a pause on that, would be a save of about what eighty thousand dollars. Correct. Okay. Is there a way to meet in the middle um, and and maybe do something where we pause at the bidding process, but even do consider looking at re looking at going out for the grant? And then, and if that, if the grant's available there, then re looking at opening that back up after with the, using that as a reason to maybe lift up to the pause. Is there any validity in that kind of a, a middle ground for everyone? Um, Does that make sense? Commissioner Wood, I guess it is, but with the vote that happened last two weeks ago to pause that, that's where mm -hmm. the confusion started for me because we paused looking for money. Yeah, and there, how this discussion could happen. And, and I think that's where the confusion lies in me is, you know, yeah, that's a middle ground, but I don't really call that a middle ground. I call that my job. No, and and, and I think at the last, I believe at the last meeting, there was a vote to put a pause in the lawn in the loan grant application, not to, to go follow through with it. And then uh, the other piece that picked up that added confusion for you, Dean, I believe was one we said we'd bring to this meeting a discussion and uh, action to bring a pause or suspend whatever the terminology is of uh, of moving forward with the uh, project. Um, in this case, I would say the pause or suspension the best time would be at the completion of the drawings um, and that type of thing to finish that piece. The uh, other part going back to Commissioner Lloyd when he says is there a way to revisit and and take a look at uh, working with staff again and, and looking for the loan grant thing. I, I believe that's all a possibility, but it would take, uh, there was a vote on it to do, and the vote went through the two, was no, not to do it. So it would take a no vote to bring it to the, uh, a motion to bring it back up uh, at a later, you know, and I'd suggest if that's the case, it would be at, uh, next to a meeting or something, and they can decide that under other, if they want to put it back on. I have no problem with that for that discussion, but that's how that can be handled, Commissioner Lloyd, if, uh, if that's a desire to um, have that uh, conversation again with uh, all five commissioners and, and, I, and that type of thing. Am I correct, John, in what I said somewhat? Mr. Chairman, that was, uh, that was perfect. Thank you. So I think going back to, we'll leave the loans uh, grant question over to one side for now and then go back to just the item on the agenda is uh, uh, commissioners I said I'd put it on the agenda to uh, see if we wanted to put a pause into this project in other words uh, uh, move towards authorizing the uh, public works director and attorney to prepare a letter to notify the architect in the pause and I'm sensing if we did move that direction that pause probably should indicate ending this phase, as Commissioner Smith said, which is the drawings, finish them, do not, uh, and that's where it ends. So I think just trying to be a good listener and putting the pieces together, I think that's what I'm, I'm hearing outside of do nothing and continue the normal track of what we're headed on on building the project with funding coming out of reserves. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Shainfield. Um, I would like to make a motion that we complete the drawings and put a pause on the project, um, bidding and construction management um, until we readdress um, in January of 2021. Um, this would allow for the opportunity for us to readdress the USDA funding um, as we see fit due to the financial issues that we're seeing right now. I think we'll know a little bit more in January how things are looking and that will allow us time to continue with um, holding on the project and being fiscally responsible as well. Thank you, Commissioner Shanefield. I'm gonna go back to the motion for a minute, just as I was listening. Um, John, uh, Attorney DeLeon, please uh, follow closely with me. Um, Lauren, Sh Ms. Commissioner Shanefield made a motion to pause um, until January of 2021. Um, I believe that motion probably should have read that to authorize you 
and the public director to um, prepare a letter of notification to the architect of the pause at the end of the drawings, completed the drawing design. Is that sufficient? So oh, it is sufficient. Uh, I think I think you can uh, make that motion how you, how you uh, deem fit. Um, but yeah, I, I guess the motion, as I understand it, is for um, for staff to prepare a uh, motion or a uh, notice to suspend um, and with a January time frame in mind. I, I, I'm not sure that the um, January time frame, and so I, I would ask for clarification if that was um, part of the, mo the motion in particular. I don't know that it is, uh, it, it would be necessary, but if, if it is, we can, we can put that in the notice. Uh, if it's, if that was just uh, dicta, meaning helping to explain the, that it could be addressed at a later time, um, then it wouldn't necessarily need to be included in the notice. So um, that clarification uh, would need to be made. Maybe, maybe what we need to do is have, uh, I know what Commissioner Schneefield is presenting. So Commissioner Schneefield, if you'll withdraw your motion, I'll uh, entertain a motion that I believe I'll have. I would like to entertain a motion that uh, the Lagoon project uh, that we authorize the uh, uh, county attorney as well as public or assistant county attorney as well as public works director to prepare a letter of notice to the architect um, of uh, pausing the Lagoon project and bring that letter to us for signature at the next meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that doesn't do the uh, the completion portion of that to complete the drawings. Yes, and that should be included. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson, um, to bring a pause after completing the drawings. But can I can, can, I, can I clarify? I, I think we need to add drawings and permits. Let's okay. have a complete package. All right, drawings. I would entertain oh, that. Permits, easements. No, let's let's get it in there and get it right. So it's it's there. So Gene, do we need to do we need to do that? Is the architect done at that point? I mean, what are we pausing with the architect? Aren't we? Isn't the architect finished then? Pausing in the bidding process. So nothing. So nothing really with the architect. No. So so we're not to, to tell. Why do we need to give the architect any seven day notice? That we're not we're not doing anything. We're saying architect finish your your job and then. We're going to pause after that. There's there's nothing to pause. They're finished. So I don't it's I don't see the need for this motion by the, the contract says because they are still in charge of bidding and then doing the construction management on the project. But mm -hmm. I don't think that requires a pause. I don't know. That's maybe a question for John. I think that's a, a, a contract issue. Yeah, that's because there's kind no, of what I gathered from previously. No we have to bid it. We just came up with those dates that fit the design schedule and the bidding schedule. And then we decide when we want, let, let the architect finish their work. And then when they're finished, we will decide when we want to go out to bid. That's that's kind of, I, I don't know that there's a need for a motion here, but Mr. DeLeon, what do you think? Good point. May I, may I interject something also? Commissioner Jeff, I, I, I agree with you 100%. I, I don't think there's need for any action at this point in time. I think we go forward uh, until the next step is required, and then that decision should made it be made at that point in time. I don't think there's any decision made need needs to be made today. Mr. De Leon, uh, you read Mr. Uh, Smith, um, and um, Mr. Ligurski can certainly expound, but th yeah, the the architect's contract is is. Uh, uh, pretty expansive. It's a um, uh, very long contract and does does uh, address a very wide scope. Um, and so it is. It would be, um, of course, the commission's decision in terms of if it's uh, necessary or not. But as Mr. Ligurski, 
identified. Um, it um, is primarily the uh, drawings, but does um, the architect does uh, remain involved through other processes. But that is a there is a natural line there, um, as uh, Mr. Ligurski identified. But isn't that at our direction to move forward? Don't we set the dates going forward for bids or anything else? Construction management. So again, the the contract does have. Um, dates and yes you would participate in those but the contract um, does go beyond just um, just the drawings thank you so i would i would still go back to the original just to uh if we get a majority to do it i would go back to a, a motion so it's on the record that the project uh following the permits, the drawings, that the uh, architect is notified that the project will be suspended and uh, have the uh, county attorney and the public works directors to prepare any documentation so that we can approve it as a board at the next meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second, but then I have discussion. Oh, definitely. Always discussion afterwards, Commissioner Lloyd. All right, I have a motion and a second. Um, discussion. Mr. Lloyd. Yeah, Gene, I want to go back to something that Jeff started on and um, just make sure I'm, I'm right. So, or I'm clear, I guess, would be the better way to put it would be, and then maybe, and John may have to help with this too. So do we have the ability in the contract to say, extended like we're I, I guess what jeff was saying like saying we're not going to move forward on the bids until this day without doing a motion or are those dates in the contract cemented enough that we have no but if we don't want to go toward biddings we've got to make the motion this would be my question jeff. that makes sense it, it does and i'm going to rely on john for this but if you if you actually read the contract under article 9 it talks about termination or suspension and it gives mm -hmm. You know, termination for or suspension because we failed to pay them or anything like that. But it also talks about, and I'm just going to read it. If the owner suspends the project, the architect shall be compensated for services performed prior to notice of such suspension. When the project is resumed, the architect shall be compensated for expenses incurred in the interruption and resumption of the architect's services. And then it goes on to say the architect's fees for the remaining service and the time schedule shall be adjusted, equitably adjusted. And then it goes on to say if the architect suspends a project, the owner shall be compensated. Um, you know, there isn't really any hard dates in here that I have seen in reviewing this other than um, the only date that's in there is the date that we signed the contract with them and the date of their original proposal, which was September 18, 2019. There's no other dates that are uh, predicated on building. And that's, and that's typical because we get together and we look at the bidding atmosphere we look at other factors we look at how long it's going to take to complete these and you don't know that up front thank you mr lloyd anything else not right now but i'm i don't know thinking the smoke the, the alarms are going to go off in this office soon so well we're to the point where we've got a motion in a second if there's any no more discussion. It's time to call for the uh, question. Mr. One Chairman. Discussion. Oh, okay, Jeff, we still have other discussion. Yeah, I know. I, I just, I just, I think that uh, I understand the, the intent of this. I don't, but again, I don't think it's necessary. So I, you know, I, I think that it's our, from what I'm hearing, it's our, as the commission, our right, our obligation to decide on the timeline of things uh, with the contract. And so um, we say thank you for all this information you've gotten us. Thanks for the permitting, the drawings. Um, we'll let you know when we're ready to go out to bid. And so I think that just sending that and letting, you know, pausing or, or um, 
disrupting the flow with the architect, I, I'm not sure that this is necessary. So that's what I'm hearing. So while I understand the intent, I, I don't think that this is is necessary, but um, that's that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I think that it's been pretty clear that we have not been clear with our staff um, and the public around this project in general. Um, I want to, I want this, the intent of this motion is to be very clear that we are holding on this project um, due to financial restrictions and that we do intend to revisit it. Um, and I think that, I think that the intent behind all of that is, is the clarity of such. Thank you. Other discussion, Mr. Johnson? Yeah, uh, the issue that I think is, is critical in, and I think the architect understands this, is that in my opinion, uh, I would not go forward with both buildings. And, and I think that I would be willing to, to pause, obviously, that, uh, that portion of it. But I do not think that we've got adequate information to make a decision on the, on the primary building the public works building. And that was caused by this commission because I think originally we were gonna take that money out of reserves, but I think there is, it would have been an opportunity to, to borrow money at a very reasonable uh, interest rate, less than 3%. And we don't even know that yet. So I, I think, like I said, I'd be willing to, to uh, pause indefinitely in my opinion the way it's been designed because I, I think there are some problems with the design that I've seen relative to the, the to the fire portion of that architectural uh, rendering that we we have but uh, I, I we're not even going to do that again we're going to and we're just going to pause everything without any further discussion and I I don't I I, I, I just don't think we have enough a information to do that so I'm along with Jeff. I, I don't think any action is required at this point in time. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? I hit the wrong button when I went to mute. Um, uh, I guess two things. Um, my concern is there are enough language in the contract if we weren't vote, to vote no today that we would not go into bidding because I don't feel like we should be going into bidding at this point. And the second question is um, part of Lauren's first motion, which has changed, was a discussion about possibly having um, staff look at possible grants during that pause point. Would that be a separate motion or a separate discussion? Could be, it would be a separate motion on a, another discussion. Roy, I think that would be a good idea. I, I think somehow we need to see what's available to us and that's a, that would be a way to do it and would give us further information. And and that could that could very well be if, if uh, proposed that it be put on the next agenda. Anything else, Roy? I think I've taken but I think I've asked enough. Thank you. Okay, is it time for the question, commissioners? We have a motion and a second. Time for commission or for a second. Uh, or I'm sorry, a, a uh, call for the question. So um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Could we have a roll call, please? Yes, roll call vote. Okay, uh, I'll start out with Commissioner Shanefield. Yes. Commissioner Lloyd. Yes. Commissioner Smith. No. Commissioner Johnson. No. Commissioner Wendling, yes. Motion carries 3-2. So you have some direction, uh, Mr. DeLeon and Mr. Ligurski, and uh, we'll sign any paperwork at the next uh, meeting in two weeks. So that'll be on the agenda. Thank you very much. I, I would like at the end, I don't know if this is right for me to talk or not, but I do think we should look at putting on the agenda, having staff do look at some of that grant availability money while we are on pause before we re re rediscuss because that could be an affecting factor in this decision. And uh, you're exactly right, Commissioners uh, Lloyd. So uh, we'll request, I know Sally's aboard, that it uh, be put on the next agenda. Thank you. Can, can I? Chairman, I think that would require some uh, some action based on what we have done previously. I'd ask John uh, for clarification oh, yeah. on that. 
you, you're exactly right. It would take a motion from uh, a no vote to, uh, or a request from a no vote, I believe, to uh, put it on, John, the exact. So, Mr. Uh, Chairman, the, I, I think that it did come from a no vote uh, with uh, uh, Commissioner Lloyd. Uh, so, I think that it uh, has come from the right location. I think uh, the it can be a motion to reconsider the funding uh, be put on the agenda for next week. Uh, and I think that uh, motion could come from uh, Commissioner Lloyd. Commissioner Lloyd, you wish to make that motion? Yeah, I would make the motion to relook at um, uh, potential um, grant funding for the building at the next meeting. Okay, we have grant or loan funding. I have a motion, is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Johnson, any further discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman, do we, do we need to, uh, does that need to be waited, uh, waited on until next time? Can we not do that this time? I mean, we, we put down a, on the agenda to talk about the project today in general terms. And I think that that's a, something well, we were making sure. the last week, so. John? I think it's appropriate to put that on for uh, the next meeting um, to have the appropriate notice and avoid a two thirds vote. Okay, does that answer your question, Commissioner Smith? I guess I would just comment then to say not, you know, Commissioner Lloyd said grant money, but uh, I would say fund just encompass all funding sources to find out what our options are. Exactly. And I, I think he I think he did say that after <laughs> did I, I not hear that, button. Roy? Yeah, I, I hit my mute button as I said that. Yeah, I thought so. No, I think it's it's not just for the project is where does this county align in regard to qualifying for grants or loans for the uh, USGA, I believe, or USDA. Is that correct? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, so what I brought before you guys two weeks ago was um, a pre-application to the USDA. So if we're looking at that um, and other funding, do those need to be two separate topics or can we encompass a vote into the one um, to reverse the previous vote or not putting in a pre-application and then looking at other funding just a discussion. We, we can do that. I believe we can do that at the next meeting. And I think this is just to, to get it onto the next meeting, Gene. Okay. That can be part of it. Thank you. Okay. okay, any other discussion? We have a motion by Commissioner uh, Lloyd and a second by Commissioner Johnson to put- I have discussion real quick. Yeah. I just want to make it clear that I'm still not a proponent for this building. I'm a proponent of looking at options. And if we can find a way to do this building dirt cheap free, I do believe we owe that to our constituents. Um, um, and I, I, no, but I mean, I don't want to spend a ton of money on the building and I'm going to be very I, clear. I'm, I am with you. I'm totally with you. And that's what I was trying to say two weeks ago and a month ago. So I am exactly in the same boat as that, that I'm not willing to spend $21 million on building a building out of our funds, but there are opportunities out there. And we voted two weeks ago to not look at those opportunities. We've, we're voting to, we voted to stop the process, which I, you know, after spending $1.2 million. So come on over, Roy. We're happy to have you on the, on the, well, I don't know all of the same page now, Jeff, but, uh, but I will say that, um, but I, I still worry about it, but I do believe down the road, we need to look at other options. And if this building doesn't go through, do we look at current industrial buildings? Because I believe in all of the maintenance parts, the, 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 the auto shop has to be looked at sooner or later due to safety. Reasons. So, but at, at this point, I'm still worried about finances, but I do think we need to have Gene continue to look. Thank you. And the other Love thing you later. that's important to, to look at about with all of these is by consolidating the facilities, you know, 16 months ago, is staff reductions and, and improving efficiencies. So we can't get that lost in because that was the original reason we went down this road. Thank you, Gene. All right, we have a motion and a second to put it on the agenda for 
our next meeting and, and carry on the conversation or discussion. Um, any other further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So Sally, we'll put that on the agenda for the next uh, meeting as well. All right, uh, moving on. Our next uh, item on our agenda is tab D, which is the Community Fine Arts Center board appointment. And uh, let me take a look. I looked at that. Uh, here we go. The Community Fine Arts Center board has a three year term. Due to Kay Womack being removed from the Community Art Fine Arts Board due to a lack of attendance per board bylaws, um, this creates the uh, uh, absence, so therefore, uh, or the vacancy, I'm sorry. So this appointment will fulfill the remainder of the term through 7 1 22. Um, new applicant is Jacob Muldowney. So I believe. Uh, Fine Arts Center Board, which is the library. Is that you, Commissioner Lloyd? It is. I feel like I've already talked too much today, but I will make this motion to appoint Jacob Muldowney to the Community Fine Arts Center Board on a three-year term. Okay, we have them, and it and it's a uh, to fill out, finish out a term. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion to appoint uh, Jacob Muldowney Downey to the vacant uh, and, uh, position as well as uh, for the remainder of the term. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shanefield. Any further discussion, commissioners? No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign, motion carries. Thank you, commissioners. Tab E, request commission to approve and chairman sign the mutual aid agreement with Wom Center Fire Department. And I believe with us today for that discussion is uh, Mr. Bornese and our fire warden. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. How are you today? It's fine. Good. Uh, I believe you have a uh, mutual aid agreement that you would like to present this morning. Yes, I do. And with Mr. DeLeon's uh, uh, help, and uh, drafting this uh, to meet legal language. Um, the county uh, has utilized and relied upon the Wompsetter Fire Department to respond to emergency calls for service in Eastern Sweetwater County for many, many years, as they are just a town volunteer fire department with a very small staff. And I felt it was time that um, as I continue to try to work on gaining mutual aid agreements with all the entities to support our county, um, it was time to fill this gap and get a mutual aid agreement with them. And in addition to that, um, we've been able to secure a housing option for us if we need to remain overnight in Wamsutter. It's a long drive back after a long day of firefighting and it's not safe for anybody. Uh, so they have a, uh, a residence they made available to us that's mentioned in referenced in the mutual aid agreement, um, which is a, a huge asset for us in addition to two upcoming potential impact projects. Uh, definitely probably be utilized as we go forward. So, uh, like I said, uh, Mr. DeLeon drafted the language, worked with the other attorney, and uh, myself and uh, Chief Davis of Wompsetter Fire support it. So, we're asking you if you would do the same. Thank you, Mr. Vornazian. Um, are there questions for either John or Don, John DeLeon or Mr. Vornazian? Commissioners? No questions. Uh, what's your pleasure, commissioners? You're muted. Commissioners, we're to a point where someone, if they want to, can make a motion. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner Shanefield. I make a motion to approve the mutual aid agreement for fire protection between Sweetwater County and Wamsutter and authorize the chairman to sign. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Second. 
Second by Commissioner Smith. Further discussion, commissioners? No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Appreciate it. Moving on for tab F. We have uh, a 1010 with uh, YDOT State Transportation Improvement Program. And uh, we have a representative from YDOT. So at this point, uh, I'll turn the floor over. Is a YDOT rep out there? there yeah. Randy, yeah. good morning. Good morning, commissioners. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and talk to you. Um, try to figure out all the technology here. I, I do have a PowerPoint uh, that was sent in, so hopefully that can be brought up or I can share my screen. Um, see if I can make that work here. Yes, yours just showed Ready? up. Able to see that? Yep. Excellent. We also have with us, uh, um, remotely some other members of YDOT, uh, uh, our district staff and local representation. So if, if there's a question that I can't answer, I may refer to them. Um, but really what I would like to speak to you guys today about is uh, kind of threefold. We wanna, and we appreciate the opportunity to come in and, and uh, discuss these things. Um, first, we wanna talk about uh, where YDOT is, our funding models, and uh, kind of where we sit in today's landscape um, and then go over our STIP, which is the State Transportation Improvement Program that is a six year outlook. And then and what projects we have in the Sweetwater area going on now and through 2026. And then look at some partnering opportunities that we have um, coming up that for local governments. So with that, I am Randy Merritt. Um, I'm an interim district engineer uh, we uh, are other district engineers out with some health issues. So I've been on loan this summer down in the, the district three area. Um, again, so if I don't have all the information and background, uh, please forgive me and we'll try to find it for you. Uh, there's a lot of information here. I'm gonna go through fairly quickly. Um, this uh, presentation was also sent uh, to uh, the county commissioner. So I believe you have it. You can go back through it at your leisure. If you have questions, please uh, let us know. If there's at some point you want me to stop and uh, reiterate or uh, uh, describe in detail more, please let me know. But I, I hate to take your important time um, if, if there's not. So we'll just move through this fairly quickly and, and uh, but stop me if you feel a need. Um, so really the purpose of our meeting today is, is uh, looking for public input uh, from you all on um, how you see things working with YDOT. Do you have a transportation system? We have a transportation system. How can we work together? Um, kind of give you an overview of what YDOT is doing and where we sit. And then again, some partnerships. So um, first our purpose, mission, vision, and values. Uh, I think really it's important to understand the purpose that we see as YDOT, what we, we bring to the table. And really what we focus on is uh, providing and supporting the economy here in the state of Wyoming uh, through safely connecting communities and improving the quality of life. Uh, Wyoming is definitely a uh, unique um, state and it's one of the reasons we live here. Yeah, we travel a lot, whether that be for uh, uh, school and, and kids activities or for work or, or for pleasure across the state. And, and very rarely do you go from point A to point B without running into somebody that you know. And, and so we want to be able to make sure that we're improving the quality of life, making sure that that, that uh, transportation system is safe, it's effective, it's reliable. And, and at the same time, we're bol bolstering the economy um, of our local constituents. Our goals. Um, uh, we really want to make sure that we have a safe and competent workforce, that we're out doing what is uh, given to us uh, by the taxpayers in a competent and safe manner that we're doing things efficiently and, and, and being good stewards of that money that we're given. 
and then to acquire and responsibly manage our resources. So, you know, YDOT has a lot of resources out there between roads, bridges, buildings, and the other things that we've been given um, to, to manage. And uh, we want to make sure that we're doing that responsibly. And then again, to provide a safe and reliable transportation system so that, you know, if you need to get from point A to point B, you can do so uh, any time of the day reliably and effectively. And we, we do uh, provide essential public safety services through communication systems, whether that be through WildLink um, that we are continually building onto or allowing other uh, local entities into the, the right-of-way utilities and stuff that, that provides communication throughout the state. And we want to make sure that we provide and uh, make partnerships with our other transportation stakeholders, our local uh, governments and constituents there and in, encourage the support and innovation. There's new technology. Are we doing, um, you know, are there other things that we can be doing more efficiently? And then I think, again, it comes back to Wyoming with, uh, we have a unique history and heritage. It's the reason we live here in this wonderful state. And we don't want to do something uh, that's going to change that heritage or, or erase that history that we have. So as we try to balance all those things through the goals, we want to make sure that we, we stay grounded in the things that keep us here and the reason why we have such great uh, people living in the state of Wyoming. Our guiding principles, and, and we've really tried to come up with these uh, um, and, and stick to them over the last, uh, especially six to eight months if we've been into a, a different uh, environment financially. And uh, so when we're making decisions on, on what we will or will not be doing in the future, or how are we going to move forward with the budgets that we do? And I'm sure you, you all have wrestling with the same thing in Sweetwater County, um, but we're going to, we have to align our expenditures with available revenue. Um, we can't have uh, a lot of services without a lot of revenue. And so we have to balance those and we're constitutionally bound to do that. Um, and so through that, first we want to focus on identifying and addressing the critical life safety issues that are out in our state. And it, that, that's a hard one to break down a lot for people because you, everything we do has a safety aspect to it when you're out on the roadway. But what we're talking here is we know we're killing people on Wyoming roads and we want to identify what is going on, what can we do to, to save people on those critical, those critical issues that are out there. And then we have to prior, prioritize YDOT's assets. So, um, you know, we've got roads, bridges, buildings, all those things that are out there and uh, we need to keep them up first. So we, we wanna focus on preserving what we own, what we've been given to take care of at this point um, as appropriate. So, you know, deciding uh, do we let some of our secondary roads uh, maybe not be quite as high standard as we used to so that we can keep some of our primary roads up better um, and just trying to balance that out and then improve operational effectiveness and efficiency we're looking at uh, one, you know, do we, can we do things better than we have in the past? Is there new technology? Do we have the right tool for the right job? Um, and then we're prioritizing our activities to minimize negative impacts to the public. So as we start looking at, okay, our revenue is not going up, so our services might have to go down. What services should we reduce first that'll have the, the, the smallest impact to our constituents and the people traveling the state highways? And then at the end, um, we'll be addressing mobility and capacity issues. So that's adding lanes, turn lanes, passing lanes, changing intersections, things like that, that, that are taking um, and improving uh, maybe a lower level of service that are out on our roads and trying to get it higher. So as we move through that, these are our guiding principles as we start to make decisions um, throughout the state. So this year, fiscal year 2020, YDOT had uh, approximately $680 million uh, in, in their overall budget. 51.5% uh, of that was federal. We had about 32.5% highway user fees. So that is uh, license plates. That is uh, when you go and um, uh, pay your highway user fees as a commercial carrier, uh, oversized loads and, and fuel taxes. And then the last 16% is other state revenues. That's payment from other state agencies, other grants, things like that that come in. Um, so how this breaks out as far as control of the money, 84% um, of that $680 million is uh, dictated by the uh, Transportation Commission. 
that money goes to construction, maintenance, equipment, facilities. Uh, basically, it goes back out on the road to do our everyday business that we have out there. Uh, the other 16% is legislative. If you notice, that lines very much with the other uh, monies that came in from the previous slide. Um, and it goes to patrol, aeronautics, driver's licenses, a lot of things that are enforcement or the ancillary things that we don't do every day out on our state highways. Uh, it also uh, used to go to human resources, but uh, as of a, about a month ago, uh, the governor took that away from all state agencies and, and consolidated human resources uh, to, in hopes to, uh, to make that more streamlined. So over the last uh, years, this slide shows in this purple blue color, it's our revenue um, and the yellow is buying power. You can see they peaked about 2010. And as you go across to 2020, we have about the exact same revenue that we've had. So we've flatlined across our revenue in the last 10 years. But of course, because of cost of things, our buying power is lower and uh, is, is down here. So we, as you know, uh, uh, the dollar doesn't stretch as far as it used to. And so even though our revenue is flat, our purchasing power continues to decline. Um, one slide to show that, I just grabbed a few of our uh, very common bid items uh, that we use on most of our projects and uh, show them over the years. Uh, I'll just go back to 2010. You can see unclassified excavation, which is just basically dirt. So every time we move a yard of dirt, in 2010, on average, it was about $3.70. Uh, last year, it was about $6.50, so almost double in price. Hot plant mix, the same thing, about $30, $30.50 in 2010. By 2019, you know, we had a 50% increase up to just over $46. So our revenue is not going up, but of course our bid prices are. Um, so, and that's kind of the picture that we are seeing and have for, for some time now. So we're looking at uh, what is our funding needs, you know, on, ongoing uh, needs studies. We're trying to determine our overall needs uh, for the department. What is it that's absolutely needed? Not nice, but needed. Um, and trying to develop priorities around that. And then looking at the trade-off. If we do A, what does it do to B? Um, what does that impact to our constituents, you know, and to, to the, the traveling public uh, here in Wyoming? Uh, of course, this has been an ongoing thing, but COVID-19, uh, I'm sure you're very much in the same uh, seat. It didn't help anybody out. At one point, we were seeing about a 40% reduction in traffic. Uh, luckily, we've caught up a little bit as I, I drive around the state. Uh, it is busy. We see a lot of vehicles out on the road. It is busy, which is helping us, but uh, we're still not back to even break even. So the way fuel taxes are received and dispersed, what that means for YDOT is we're going to lose about $11 million uh, this year in 2020, which our fiscal year ends uh, in September. And uh, for the new fiscal year 2021, starting in October, we expect about a $23 million decrease for the next year, um, which is, is not helpful. So where does this money go? Um, a little over 56% of it goes into a highway improvement program. So that's basically everything that goes out to a contractor to build. And it uh, does our, again, our roads, our bridges, it's buildings, uh, wild link towers, whatever we, we send a contract out there. Um, whether that be for overlaying and maintaining an existing road or adding additional uh, facilities to, to our, our transportation program. The other, another 16.3% uh, is our maintenance and operations. So these are the things that we do in house, uh, basically uh, snow plowing, pothole fixing, fence fixing, uh, that type of stuff. Anything you see those yellow trucks out doing, that's kind of our maintenance and operation budget. And then it trickles on down through through here, through law enforcement, aeronautics, um, and, and capital expenditures. And, and you can see those as, as it goes down through. So the bulk of our program, 380 million, is goes to the contractors with another 110 million is what we do in-house to keep our roadways up and going. So funding um, from 2020 that was made available to cities and counties, there was about $23.5 million total that could go to roadways that we passed on through to local governments. Uh, uh, just under 15 million, it was optional. So we don't have to pass it through, but it, it made sense to do so. We were required to send 8.4 million of that to the local governments. Out of that 20.4%, or 
2.4 million were federal funds and 2.9 million were state funds. And that, those go into those um, grant type programs such as our, our urban areas, our bros, our uh, high risk rural roads, railroad crossings, enhancement, all that kind of stuff, which we'll talk about uh, in more detail in a minute. Uh, 32.8 million went into our airport, most of that being federal funds. As you can see, we did have $10 million of state funds. And then there is about $15 million that we uh, pass through to our local governments uh, for public transportation. So we have taken a look at some of our operating needs. Uh, what would it take to get us to be able to fund all of our needs that are out there? Um, so for surface transportation, both the construction and maintenance of our assets that are there, and to add some of our uh, mobility issues, add those additional lanes, we're looking at uh, about $69 million for construction and $3.4 million in maintenance. Uh, revenue information system, it's a RIS. Uh, I don't know how many people are familiar with that. Uh, YOT has been tasked with maintaining the RIS system, which is a computer system that keeps all of our personal information um, down in Cheyenne. So when you go in to get a driver's license and you get your passport and your birth certificate and a, all that kind of stuff, that, that information is housed in that computer. It's also used by many other agencies. YDOT is about a 30% user of that, but other agencies um, also uh, chime in and, and use that system. It is failing. It's very expensive to maintain because of that failure. So we're spending almost $7 million a year just in annual maintenance. Uh, to replace it's about a $50 million upfront with a $70 million uh, total cost over a few years. So we have not been able to find the money to uh, replace that at this point. Um, so we've just continually uh, maintained it. Um, as we jump down through here, you can see from telecoms, airports, fleet equipment, that's uh, vehicles, snow plows, motor graders, dozers, things that we need to, to continue to maintain our system. And then we jump down into our buildings, uh, and uh, we, we have buildings that uh, are falling down uh, to the point that uh, they're, they're nearly condemned so that, that our people are still working out of. To get those back up and maintain them appropriately, you can see what it would cost. And overall, we're just over $135 million that, that we need to add to our funding model to be, to be equal. Um, so what are we doing? We know we're not gonna get that money anytime soon. So we're looking at all sorts of different things that we, uh, can reduce or maybe do more efficiently. I won't go through every one of these in, in detail, but you know we're looking at uh, how do we handle our fleet, our pool cars, looking at building leases. We own a lot of buildings, but we also lease a lot of buildings, especially driver services, highway patrol, that kind of stuff. Maybe that's not the best way to go, maybe it is, but uh, we're looking into those. Again, ports of entry, uh, we are installing or, or uh, a secondary company has come to us and we are installing some new, uh, basically um, pre-pass type things at our ports for trucks to be able to get in and out of our state a little more easily um, and hopefully make us more efficient also. Hiring timing, we're looking at uh, if we have a snowplow operator retire or leave the department uh, in the spring, we are not replacing them until later in the fall and hopefully using the that vacant position as a cash flow for us. So. Um, as you look through here, you can see quite a few things that we're working at, trying to decide, is it worth keeping? Or are there other things that we can do uh, more efficiently? So local government programs, things that will be affecting um, the local governments and our constituents at that level. I, I just wanna go through each one of these to make sure that you're aware of what these programs do and then um, where we're going with them in the future. So the TAP program, which is a transportation alternative program, it's about a two and a half million dollar uh, grant uh, a year, uh, a funding source, I should say, uh, every year. Um, and it allows people to, uh, or communities to have other modes of transportation. This is where you get things such as state routes, bicycle paths, uh, that type of stuff throughout communities. Um, and we'll continue to honor that program through as it is through existing agreements. And we'll, we'll continue that program uh, under the same 80-20 split with the feds. Industrial road program, this is kind of the old farm to market uh, program. It was there $2 million per year, 4 million by biennium. Uh, it was a 50% match by the county. And uh, it was out there to try to develop economic uh, stability and, and ways to get uh, different uh, goods across our state. 
It was a 50-50 match. We'll honor those that are already in the program that we have agreements with, but the IRP will be going away after that. We'll no longer be funding the, our IRP um, program. Transportation enhancement activities. What this is, is um, there's $2 million sit out there every year that YDOT can add to a project. So if we were in the middle of, let's say Rock Springs or Green River doing a project and the local entity wanted to come, to, wanted to add some money uh, or some things to that project that, that were similar in nature. So maybe upgrading some storm sewer, adding some street lighting, such things like that. We can add that up to $400,000 per project. It is a 90-10 split from the feds, and we'll continue that as we always have um, with periodic reviews, you know, everything subject to change in the future. CSA, context sensitive amenities, kind of the same thing. Uh, if we're working inside a municipality, we can add up to 3% above and beyond what the project uh, scoping cost shows. Um, and that allows for the local entity to be able to add some amenities that helps the project blend into their uh, culture environment of that town. So whether it be planters, benches, such things as that. And it is a 90-10 pay. YDOT has always matched that 10% to get the 90% federal. We'll be changing that. We'll continue the program, but that match of 10% will be going to the local uh, entity that is asking for that 3% to be added. Commission Road Improvement Program, CRIP. It's a $5 million a year. Um, this is a program that is overseen by the Transportation Commission. And it basically allows a county most of the time, if they have a failing roadway, they can come to us. We can use uh, this, our money to uh, the, this federal source of money with, with a 15% match to uh, rebuild that roadway. The caveat is then the local entity, the county would take on the same number of miles off of the state system. So we would go out and find a, a low volume secondary that would function as a county road. And if we rebuilt six miles of your county road, we would then uh, give you the six miles off of that secondary road. Um, and it would be on the county, the, the, the county system from there on out. So you get a nice road up front, but you do end up with more maintenance uh, for the long run off of the state system. That will continue as is, but uh, the commission can make adjustments at any time. Surface transportation project, urban funding. Um, so if you're a, a community over 5,000 in population, then you can be part of what's called the urban systems. And every year you get a certain amount depending on the population the, of your uh, community. And that kind of builds up over time on a ledger. Then when you get enough to be able to do a project, a city street or something like that, you can, you can go ahead and use that money to do so. Um, that program will continue as is, again, periodic review. The community snow removal payment. This is the one that's probably going to uh, hit most of our smaller uh, cities throughout Wyoming. So if you are a municipality that is below 1500 in population, YDOT maintains the state system inside the, those municipal boundaries. We, we plow snow and that kind of stuff. If you're over 5,000 years in the urban systems, but there was kind of that no man's land between 1500 and below 5,000. So historically YDOT has uh, provided funding to those cities uh, to, to aid in snow removal for the winter. Um, we did make the payments for July of 2020, but that will be the last payment um, to those local uh, municipalities and they, they, we will no longer be helping them out with the community snow removal payment. And I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure of which ones that will hit in the Sweetwater area, um, but throughout the state, that is definitely one of them that, that is a more um, impacting to, to our local constituents. Uh, CMAC, the dust, County Dust Suppression Mitigation, will continue that. That's mainly uh, placing rotomill tailings and or uh, dust suppression type chemicals on our uh, gravel roads. So that will continue uh, into the future. Um, again, we'll evaluate it as we move forward, depending on funding. Bridge Replacement Off Systems, BROS, uh, it is a program where the federal government uh, puts in $1.86 million dollars 
And YDOT up to this point has uh, matched with 1.3 million um, and it allows local uh, governments to rebuild bridges that are off of the state system. Um, that is gonna continue, but uh, it may, you know, we'll be evaluating that uh, in the future. If something were to change that $1.3 million, that is state money could be pulled out of that and it would be reduced back to the 1.86 million of federal dollars. And then finally, high risk rural roads. Um, we know we're killing about 60% of our, or our, our fatalities are about 60% of them occur on rural roads. Usually, uh, you know, you got tighter corners, steeper side slopes, uh, you know, narrower roadways. And so this high risk rural road uh, money is out there to help counties upgrade some of those roads, put in, you know, guardrail signs, that kind of stuff, um, and, and hoping to reduce that fatality rate out on our rural roads. So that's kind of where we're going as far as what money is being sent to local government programs. Um, if you have questions, uh, please let me know, um, and, uh, and we can work through those. Uh, rest area closures. I'm sure you guys have, have heard or read about uh, the rest area closures that we did across the state. We did pick 10 of them. Again, as we were looking at what uh, services YDOT provides that are maybe nice but not necessary, uh, we looked at, at the rest areas. And going back to our guiding principles, looking at what would uh, have the least impact on our constituents of the traveling public, we picked 10 rest areas that uh, are very close to uh, other communities there. As you can see, Fort Steele is the one that's furthest away from a community that provides the same service. Uh, most of these are within one to two miles or reside right in the same community. So again, it's a service that was being provided by the rest area, but not necessarily uh, necessary, I should say, um, because that service can still be uh, provided at at the, the local level by, by the local convenience store. And, and our hope is that uh, people stop, you know, grab a bag of chips and pop and, and, and do their business and, and hopefully help the economy at the same time. But by closing these 10 rest areas, we saw a net savings over a calendar year of about $900,000. So, so trying to figure out where we can cut without really making it painful to our constituents. And I would say that if you do drive over on I-25 to Chugwater, you'll see that that rest area is back open. The town of Chugwater decided it was uh, important enough that they went ahead and took on the maintenance um, and costs of that rest area. And so they are now running it um, there in, in their community. So YDOT highway assets, it's kind of a, how we're balancing again, our asset needs versus is the other needs that are out there. First, we're trying to maintain what we own already. And uh, as you can see, we have about 6,800 miles of road, about 6,000 bridges and structures, 42,000 culverts, 800 miles of guardrail, 80,000 signs, and, and 12 million or 12,000 miles of fence. So first, our money's got to go to preserving our assets. After that, we know we have some mobility and, and capacity issues. We have roads that are just starting to uh, be so uh, crammed that, that they're not functioning, they're not reliable anymore. We also know we have some safety issues out there that we're trying to identify and, and mitigate. Wildlife is becoming bigger and bigger as we start seeing these routes. Um, you know, as you see the, the migration of the mule deer and the pronghorn that come out of Teton County and down through Sublette County and into Sweetwater County. Um, so trying to figure out how to make safe passage for wildlife and better. Active transportation, um, this goes, uh, there, there's multi facets of it, but one of them is autonomous vehicles. Uh, we know they're coming. What is that infrastructure gonna look like? What have we gotta do to get ahead of that? Roadside features, we have steep drop-offs, narrow roadways, do we upgrade them? Do we make, that's part of the safety issue. And then ITS is intelligent transportation systems. And that's things such as the, the you see out on I-80 where we have the speed limits that can be dropped depending on weather conditions and driver expectancy out there. So some of the other things we've done is we've delayed some construction projects. This is the top 10. We actually have 12 that we've identified. Um, as you note, most of these are things that are adding capacity, reconstruction, adding something to five lanes, 
uh, passing lanes, things like that. So really the, that bottom guiding principle we have of adding capacity and mobility to our roadways. Um, and th there's a lot of money tied up in here. As you can see the very first project, I-80, I-25 interchange, that's down there in Cheyenne, $310 million just for that project. So that would be our entire construction budget for one year, just in one project. We just can't afford to do that. So we are delaying these. We are continuing to do some of the preliminary engineering on them, getting the right of way and permitting and that kind of stuff. But we will not be going to construction until we have a change in funding models or find some other funding for these through grants or other things. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Any questions up to that point on any of these programs? Commissioners, any questions? Yeah, I have some questions, but I'll wait till he's finished. Okay. So our step process overview, kind of what we do with our state transportation improvement uh, planning. So this is mainly the federal money, uh, our 10 cent tax money from fuel taxes and things that go out to our contractors. Um, how we put this together every year, it is a six year rolling uh, document, but we massage it uh, quite heavily every year right after um, um, legislation meets. So we take and we look at our asset management systems. We look at our bridges, our plant mix, uh, from rutting to roughness, that types of stuff. Um, and and we, we try to get some candidate projects pulled out of there in May, uh, April, May timeframe and get a, a list to balance the, the dollars we have with the project needs and the assets that we have. And then between June and August, uh, we come out to the public. That's kind of what we're doing here today and saying, okay, here's what our STIP looks like. These are the projects we're doing um, in your area. Do you have any feedback for us um, that we can work into our STIP over the next six years? Something that maybe we're not quite aware of or something that we can partner on with the local uh, entities. And then by September, we, we turn it into our Transportation Commission who approves it, runs it through the Federal Highway Administration, and it's published in October. And then we stay with that step basically till the next spring uh, when we're trying to plan. Now as projects, uh, maybe they, they get ahead of schedule and design, or sometimes we, we end up with a, a bit of a catch with some right-of-way issues or some environmental issues that has to get pushed back. It is a living document that we massage as we move forward. So our STIP project map, if you jump on the YDOT website, you can see all these pretty little colors and flags. They have a year next to them. If you hover over one of those, it'll bring up what the project is, what we're gonna do, where it's at, and what year it's in. And then it gives you an opportunity to have a comment box there. That does go back to each of the districts. We review those and, and follow up with those comments. So if, you have, uh, if you're wondering what's going on, uh, you can always pull this up. It is real time as best as we can keep up with it as we, we go through our STIPs. So once we have our STIP in there, we are kind of how we work through to get out to contract as we go through our, our planning phase, through the STIP development, um, catch our public input, and then jump into our design phase. So we have uh, different plan issuances. We go out and do our engineering studies, that kind of stuff. We, we tie in the public as appropriate. Again, most of the time, if we're doing a, a level and overlay out in the middle of nowhere, people really don't I have that much to say, but if we're downtown in front of somebody's business, we definitely want to get them involved uh, up front so that we, we know what the impacts are going to be to those individuals. And then we move on into the contract phase. Uh, we advertise, we bid it, um, and we start construction. We continue to have those public meetings as appropriate um, and uh, according to what the public interest is on those projects. Kind of an overall number of projects you can see since about 2009. Uh, we let approximately 100 projects a year. There's a few years that are a little higher, some that are a little lower. Uh, we will make that again in 2020. We have our last letting in September, and we'll be right around that $300 million, which is, is pretty average. So what is in the STIP? Uh, if you look at our STIP, again, it's a six-year plan. It goes over our transit projects, so our roadway, surface transportation, and then aeronautics, uh, we look at public safety communications, and then capital constructions, our buildings and other things. If you were to pull up on our website what the STIP looks like, this is what you would see for each county. This is Natrona, just as a, an example, but there is a block for capital improvements. It shows you what's going on in which year, communication projects. There would also be a block for uh, surface transportation 
and, and anything else that's going on in there. And it, it just kind of gives you the, uh, the breakdown of what's happening in each year. It also gives you an overview for each year of uh, what's happening as far as transportation projects, capital improvement projects. Um, and through, this would be through 2026 when it says future years and the total amount of money that's being spent in that county. You can see in Natrona County, there's gonna be about 190 million over the next six years spent in that county. So with that, our local projects here, this year, what's going on is we have uh, some projects out on I-80. I'm sure you guys are aware of those if you've driven uh, either east or west of Rock Springs. And we're doing some mill level and overlays um, between mile marker 107 and 120. And uh, we're putting in concrete pavement uh, there west of, of Green River from 77 to 83 and doing a little bridge rehab out there. Interchange Road. So uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion about this, the new interchange there. We are still working with uh, uh, the railroad in trying to get that moving. Our fingers are crossed for hopefully October we'll be able to start work on there and, uh, and get going. But uh, I'm not gonna hold my breath when working with the railroad. Uh, we're kind of at their mercy with their, their time. So, um, and then of course, we're always doing some, our, our isolated annual uh, maintenance of crack seals, chip seals, contract patch. And we are installing a wild link tower through, throughout the, the county. Upcoming projects, there's a lot going on um, and coming up in Sweetwater County. Um, so next year in 2021, we'll be doing the other half of that 107 to 120 out on I-80, mill level and overlay on the eastbound lanes. Uh, we'll be out by Bitter Creek uh, doing a, a mill overlay and some plant mix wearing course and a little bridge rehab. And then on 191 north of Rock Springs uh, between mile marker 21 and a half and 32.7, jump out with a, a mill and overlay and a chip seal out that direction. In 22, we'll be down on Wyoming 372 uh, and the 28 junction, that Fontenelle section uh, between mile marker 17 and, and 27 with an overlay and a chip seal. Uh, we'll be on I-80 between 65 and 76, doing a mill overlay and wearing course. And then we'll be in the town of Green River doing some traffic signal upgrades uh, some detection and, and some other things in there at Riverview and Monroe, and then also at Second Street. In 23, we'll be back out on I-80, uh, both east and westbound lanes uh, between 57 and 65, just doing uh, overlay and some plant mix spraying course, a little bridge rehab. 24, we'll be again back on I-80. I feel like a broken record, I-80, I-80, I-80. It's a, a kind of kind of that thing that takes a lot of money and a lot of time. Um, we'll be back out both eastbound and westbound lanes between 143 and 154 uh, near Patrick Draw. And then we'll be back down on 191 South out there by Flaming Gorge Road, uh, marker 504 to 511, putting an overlay on it. 25, we'll be on Wild 530, uh, doing a mill an overlay between 38 and 45 down towards the Utah state line. Uh, back out again on I-80, both eastbound and westbound towards Rollins from 130 to 138. And then we'll be uh, again down on Wyoming 530, a different section from two to seven with a mill level overlay and chip seal. This project is gonna have a little bit of an overlap with one in 26 uh, with some ADA and a few things, uh, as you can see. Um, we'll be back on 530 between 26 and 33 and 26. Hopefully we're getting pretty good to where that road's going to be in good shape uh, in the next six or seven years. We'll have it kind of rebuilt or rehabbed. Uh, then we'll be back out on I-80, uh, Table Rock, uh, 148 to 174, uh, 191 South, uh, right next to the Utah end of things. We're going to do a full depth reclamation. What that is is when we mill up both the plant mix and the base, um, mix it together, recompact it, smooth it back out, and then we'll be putting an overlay and a chip seal on top of that. Hopefully to get rid of that uh, constant cracking and, and break uh, the, those cracks that you get that are, that are kind of consistent out there, um, it, it breaks that up. Uh, we're working on the belt loop here in Rock Springs uh, from zero to five, doing a crack and seat project on that concrete. 
um, and then placing so, uh, also an overlay with some plant mix and some wearing course in areas. Um, and this is the one where that, that Green River to Utah section on 530 mile marker zero to three overlaps with the project in 25. Uh, we will not be tearing up what we did in 25, but, but there is kind of an approach to the project there and doing again that full depth reclamation, adding some wearing course and then upgrading the ADA. So anytime we're inside a, a municipality where there's ADA facilities already present, if we go in there and we do anything more than basically a chip seal and some, some minor things, we have to do by federal uh, regulation, the ADA upgrades. So we'll take care of those while we're there. And then we'll be out on that service road by Little America also on 374 for mile marker 70 to 84 with that another full depth reclamation and an overlay. So that's kind of what we have in projects um, planned up to this point for Sweetwater over the next six years. Um, so I'm just gonna jump into some of the partnerships that we have or we can have. I'm not gonna go through these in detail. We already kind of talked about them, but again, you have the bros, the context sensitive amenities, our enhancements, the TAP, the CMAC, the CRIP, um, high risk rural roads, the FLAP. This is one I didn't talk about. So just quickly, uh, it is a federal lands access program. You're probably uh, familiar with it, but if you have federal land in some location uh, that is, a lot of people go out and recreate, or maybe there's a mine or something like that out there. The road needs rebuilt that, that takes you to that federal land. You can put in for a, a, a grant and uh, it's a 10% local match to help rebuild that road to maintain that access to that federal property. Um, again, public transportation. And then not that it's run by us, but this is a big uh, opportunity for local governments. I'm sure everybody's uh, aware of it, but the SLIB Capital Construction Loan Program. So, um, which, which is important. It helps a lot of our communities stay, stay afloat. Other partnerships that we have during construction, we do a lot of things out on our roadways, everything from fencing to overlaying to chip sealing to whatever. If there is something that we are doing and we're in the area where the county is wanting something done, we can do a partnership agreement. So say we're out doing a chip seal and you guys have a county road that is near where we're already working, we can do an agreement to add your county road to our project. And what that does is get you the unit price that YDOT pays. So hopefully economy of scale and it keeps the cost a little bit lower. And we just do an agreement um, to, for the preliminary engineering and the construction costs. We oversee all of that and the county just reimburses us for their actual cost for their portion of the project. So if there's anything we're doing out there and you think, hey, there should be an opportunity for us to jump on board, uh, we, we can definitely do that. The other is through supply purchases. We buy a lot of stuff, everything from road oil to bulk uh, uh, salts to paint beads, even drug and alcohol testing services. Our contracts are written to allow a local entity to piggyback on for the same price. So you don't have to be part of the contract up front but you can get into the contract after the award to, to whatever area. So if we're, uh, we're say we're buying a bunch of road oil to do chip seals and you guys need some, you can jump onto our, um, on, onto our contract at that point and get the same price that YDOT does. So there's some opportunities there. Um, so just quick contact information. Again, I'm Randy Merritt, the, the, the interim district engineer. I don't know how much longer I'll be down in the District 3 area. It kind of depends on the health of our individual there and, and what happens. Um, but uh, at least through the, the end of this month, I'll, I'll be around. Um, our chief engineer in Cheyenne is Mark Gillette. Keith Fulton is our assistant chief engineer over engineering and planning. Uh, our assistant chief over operations was vacant until this week. Um, and that now is an individual named Tom Dehoff. He's out of the Laramie area and he'll be uh, there in Cheyenne. Uh, taking over those that that uh, end of things, and probably the most important number. If uh, if you don't have it or don't know Sarah, you need to get to know her. So write this number down. She is our local government coordinator. She's the one that takes care of all these programs uh, that are out there and knows them inside and out. So uh, I know enough just to be dangerous. But if you really want the full story, uh, Sarah is the one to talk to and, and work through all of the uh, the ins and outs of how these programs work. So last question that we have, and, and again, I don't expect an answer today, but to think about it, um, how do we work together? You Again, you guys are balancing your dollars on your transportation 
system. We're trying to balance our dollars on our transportation system. Are there ways that we can work together and make those dollars stretch further? And then also are there ways to enhance that funding? Are there things that we can do to go out and try to find funding uh, together and, and make it uh, to where each of us has a little more to, to do what we need with? Um, with that, this year also, this presentation or very similar presentation is online. It started on July 13th, it ends on August 31st. If you go to y.stipmeeting.com, you can walk through the same slides basically, and there's opportunities for feedback and comments in there. Um, so, so if there's something that you think, boy, I really wish I had to ask this, you can pop on there, go back through it, ask your question there, or, or you can give me a call either way. So with that, I know we're uh, really close on time. Um, that is the last of our um, PowerPoint presentation. So I'll open up questions, whatever, whatever question you, you have. Yeah, Randy, this is Wally Johnson. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the great presentation you just made. That's, that's very informative. We appreciate that very much. But the other thank you I would give you is uh, for the roto mill that you provide for us. That's very, very important to us. Uh, we utilize that and it's very important to the transportation system within Sweetwater County. And I, I, we all appreciate that. The other project that you're involved in is, is a joint project on fence modification on Highway 28 with Wyoming Game and Fish. You know, it, it, that's not only a, uh, in the interest of wildlife, but that's a safety issue with that fence modification. And uh, I'd urge you to continue that if, if at all possible. But the real answer to that problem with Highway 28, if, if we really believe that our big game animals are an asset uh, for the state of Wyoming, there needs to be an overpass on Highway 28. I keep preaching that. And obviously it's a poor time to be asking for money to do a major uh, project like that. But the uh, suggestion I've made in the past and I'll continue to make it is in good times, oil, uh, oil and gas in Sweetwater County is, uh, and in the state of Wyoming uh, takes tremendous profits out, out of the state of Wyoming. And I think some of that could be put back if they would be willing to, uh, for a public private uh, project such as that overpass and allow them to advertise on each side of that, headed east or headed west, uh, this overpass built with funds from BP, for example, or Exxon, et cetera, uh, and, and partner up with those people to get that overpass built. Because once those pronghorns and deer and elk get into the Red Desert, they're safe. And, and so, is this, so is the public that are traveling on Highway 28. So I. I'd urge you to uh, keep an open mind on different ways to fund the possible overpass for 28 and uh, see if it can't be done. Where there's a will, there's a way. And I, I, I think in the interest of public safety and, and the wildlife that we all uh, respect and need for the economy of Sweetwater County and, and the state of Wyoming, I appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Uh, I can only, you know, echo what Commissioner Johnson's saying, Randy, but uh, also when I think about those overpasses and, and life-saving, whether it's animal or people, it fits directly in line, I think, with your guiding principles number two, which is focusing on the addressing identified uh, critical life safety issues, because that is uh, critical and it is life-saving and uh, meets all the other objectives that Commissioner Johnson talked about. So uh, other commissioners, comments or questions? And Gene, I know you're on, so if you've got a question, feel free to ask uh, Randy and we'll see what we can do. No other questions? All right, with that, Randy, we thank you very much and we're appreciative of uh, what you uh, do at the Transportation Department for the State of Wyoming, especially District 3. Uh, very enlightening to know that uh, with phone call to the right person, um, there can be assistance, and uh, we know Mr. Ligurski, our public works director, works very close with uh, District 3 and, and probably has a handle on all these programs, and uh, we appreciate you making them available to us so that we can operate more efficient in the uh, county. But uh, to you and the uh, rest of your employees, uh, be safe out there and 
and let them know we appreciate the work they're doing for the citizens of Sweetwater County. Thank you, Randy, and be safe. Jean? Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to be here and, and share this with you today. Gene, you had something? No, I did not. Um, I just want to thank Randy and his staff for all that they do for Sweetwater County and their help and, and guidance and something. We share specs and road mill is important. We just bought uh, uh, two uh, plow trucks that they did a, a master service agreement to buy from Floyd's here in town that you guys approved and we uh, got those on order. So um, things are working well between us. Great. Good to hear that. Thank you, Randy, for all that. Yep. Thank you, Gene. Okay, if there's no more questions, we'll continue on with our business for today and we'll move right into uh, tab G. Um, and uh, let's see where we're at here. Let's let's go ahead and move into tab G and, and uh, probably H and maybe we'll take a break then or something. But anyhow, uh, was that okay, commissioners, or do you need a break now? It's fine with me. Oh, a break? Yeah, either way. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's get a couple more done here and see if we can go. Let's move into tab G, which discussion on the COVID updates for the commissioner's meeting room. And with us is Mr. Ligurski. So, Gene, are you out uh, there? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a couple things on this. I'm going to share my screen here shortly. But um, as you guys know, we qualified for some COVID relief money to uh, make the commissioner meeting room better so we can start meeting in the public. But in that grand scheme of things, we also need to keep in mind with technology upgrades, this has worked really well for people that are not able to attend those meetings. They can watch them, they can participate through Zoom, they can participate through other things. So we need to keep in mind um, that whole thing when we upgrade this room to incorporate back technology, because that only helps with COVID, but it helps with it just being uh, better, having you guys better connected to the constituents um, that you guys represent. Um, and what I'll do is Tim's on there and he can answer some of the things, but I'd like to, you to lead you through the three different scenarios that I came up with. All of them have pluses or minuses. Um, we can talk about that, discuss them, um, and go through those. So I'll share my screen. And I want to start out. At, I didn't really call them fancy. I'm not um, very good at words. So I just, I, I call it, we'll start with the corner meeting room concept idea and go from there. Can you guys see that? Sure can, Gene. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll zoom in on uh, this one right here. And what this is, is it's the quarter meeting room idea. Um, this is the vestibule and the main hallway that comes in. This is the existing doorway. This is the doorway that goes in the commission meeting room. You guys typically sit up here. This corner meeting room uh, concept, in order to get you guys uh, spaced far enough apart, we cannot put everybody's spaced along this back wall. There is not enough room, it's 23 foot. In order to get you guys spaced, we actually need 24 feet uh, between you guys and plus the maneuverability room unless you guys are going to do a Dukes of Hazard and side over the commissioner's table every time you gotta get in and out of there. This one's uh, putting you guys against that back wall. It's not going to work. We came up with this uh, corner meeting idea. We could set two commissioners here and three here, generate um, during COVID situations, um, eight public seating areas. We can have the attorney and the clerk and the IT sitting back here. Um, with this, uh, you know, the clerk could be in there, Sally could be in there, however they need to do that. Um, I don't know, but one could be in their office because they could be doing exactly what they are now. Um, this is a pretty simple one. If you've actually looked in the meeting room right now, the carpet's gone, um, the ceiling has been gone. We've looked at everything above it. Um, we're actually looking at raising that ceiling a little bit, um, probably about a foot. Um, to get some uh, better viewing angles, to be able to hang a TV from the rafters, not have anybody hit it, um, stuff like that. So you guys can see that and there'll be different presentation TVs around the room that we can use. Tim has talked about utilizing uh, two of the TVs that he has access to here and then and purchasing some other ones. Uh, we would have a, an, an upgraded camera on this far wall where the existing camera is and another camera behind you guys that would actually get the people speaking from the podium or out in the audience there. Uh, mics and sound and everything like that would be wired throughout the room and that's part of those. Um, if you look at the next one, it's a rotated meeting room. Um, kind of the same concept except we can fit you guys along this wall. Um, this would be the west wall and we um, have the clerk and the attorney sit up front. Same kind of concept with the TVs hanging on the sides and in the middle. Um, 
the one thing about this and the other one that I didn't mention is for audio visual stuff to do it on zoom. Um, this orientation with you guys against these windows, unless we black those windows out, is not very good because of AV. Um, the cameras pick up light differences and everything. And, and if you guys have noticed on Zoom, depending on how your individual offices or wherever you are are lighted, it's very tough to see you guys. Um, so during the different times of the year, these windows and these windows become a problem. Um, when we looked at that, um, you know, after these two, we could fit, uh, you know, roughly um, eight people in here. Um, and I turned around and I said, well, what happens if we do something completely different? And that lead, led us into the third one. The third one is a little bit more detailed. And the reason I say that is because if you look at this one, there's uh, Jeff Smith's office here. You have um, a, a small bathroom here and a janitorial closet here. Now, when we went in the other one, we actually started looking at what this wall was made out of. If it was a beam or anything in there, it isn't. The beams actually run over here. So between this one and this one, what I looked at doing is if we expand that, take Jeff's office, the bathroom, the janitorial closet out and expanded you guys and put you guys over here. We could space everybody apart. There's no windows in the back, so audio visually it's good. Um, we'd keep the two commissioners here. What we would do is move the, the third commissioner that was here over in Bonnie's office and then move Bonnie into Mark's office. And then what we do is Mark's part of the land use. So we thought about moving him downstairs with us. Um, you know, Bonnie could stay in this office and we would put the other one over there. But for right now, I just figured that you guys would kind of like to be hidden behind this corner and then they would, everybody wanted to walk directly to their office. That's, you know, that's just moving somebody that isn't really critical. Um, but what this one provides for everybody is a, is a fairly square room. It's 35 by 29. Um, you can also fit 14 public seats. You can almost double the amount of public that you can have in there. Very good for planning and zoning. Very good for you guys. The other thing it allows us to do is to be able to completely utilize technology to be able to put two TVs up, two TVs for the audience. This section right here would be a raised podium. So you guys are up off the ground, only six inches. And the reason we do that is because of ADA and other safety things where we would need, um, I almost said guardrail, not guardrail, handrail um, and stuff like that. And then we'd have to put an ADA handicap ramp back into Sally's office and move her stuff in a different way. Um, we would need to move Jeff's door. Jeff's door is kind of in the middle of his office. Um, well, after, sorry, Lauren's office right here. And we'd need to move that down. And then also, because this room would be able to, under non-COVID times, have so many people sitting in it. Um, the occupancy is almost 130 people in there now. We'd need to actually have another exit door that we'd put in. And this goes out into the veranda. Um, this is Commissioner... Um, Lloyd's office with the double doors that come out. And so this veranda with the things, we have already talked to the fire marshal just to kind of see if this was even possible. He suggested this, um, it's good flow. That way you can have half the people escaping this way and half the people escaping that way. Um, kind of what I'd like to do is just, if you guys have questions, we can go over these three. I want to get some direction with you guys because my goal is to have these implemented and in place by Thanksgiving. We have a deadline with everything by the end of December. But with any of these, <laughs> excuse me, we have, you know, lighting, we have asbestos scum contractors, we have a lot of things that we have to get in place and kind of in a queue so we can get this done in a timely fashion. Thank you, Gene. Uh, anything uh, else to add to that? <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, the one thing you know, you talk about your deadline of December 31st, I believe. I believe that's when the money has to be spent coming out of this uh, COVID 19 grant. That is, that is correct. Yeah. So it's. And by the time, you know, they finally bill us, we get it turned around and stuff like that. I want to be done by Thanksgiving so we make sure that we do not break that deadline. Okay. And that's the importance of that deadline. So uh, that type of thing. Okay. I'll open the floor up. Commissioners, your thoughts? Yeah, I have a question for Gene. Um, Hey, Gene, looking at these drawings, I guess, you know, from a schematic um, technological point, which one would, um, which one do you, per, which one did you prefer or which one would you recommend to be the best? As I looked through, I kind of leaned toward open meeting room just because it had more seating and it seemed to be that you kind of leaned that way, but which one would be your, your recommendation? My recommendation would be the open meeting room also. 
uh, not only for the public seating, but also technology. It works very well as far as audiovisually with the cameras, um, the seating and everything like that. You start getting in the corner meeting room at awkward spaces. Um, anytime mm -hmm. you can get in a room uh, close to a square as possible, it's just better for seating, audio, visual, and everything around it. Thanks, Gene. Thank you, Commissioner Lloyd. Other commissioners' thoughts? Yeah, I've missed, as I looked at these and uh, given this some thought, uh, you know, again, we're doing this in the interest of uh, a, a virus that hopefully is going to be gone uh, in possibly as early as next year with vac with the vaccines that might be possible. And, and we're changing the design of, uh, of our meeting room uh, primarily based on that. There's another issue that we need to keep in mind is, uh, as you heard one of the comments that was made today, that do we really need, and I'm talking about the future, and I, I'm not saying this today, I was opposed when we went to five commissioners, when we did go to five commissioners, but sometime in the future, there might be a desire for, uh, for the county to go back to three commissioners. And here we're designing this for five. There are a lot of issues here that I think need to be in the equation before we make that decision. Uh, so I, I just think, uh, and obviously I'm not gonna be here uh, and some of you aren't going to be here sometime in the future. And uh, this is a this is a modification that's going to be with us a long time, and I think we need to give it uh, due consideration before we make that decision. But obviously, time is of the essence. In order to uh, take advantage of the monies that've been uh, made available to us, so all I'm saying to my co-commissioners, keep that in mind when you when you make your decision as to how we should go. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Other commissioners, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Shanefield. Um, I just wanted to ensure with Ms. Ligurski that all three of these um, would fit under the um, grant that we received funding-wise. Um, uh, Mr. Shanefield, or, or sorry, Ms. Ms. Shanefield, um, not all the, not 100%. Uh, the open meeting room, the wall in the back would probably not be covered by that, but that is a very minimal cost for the space. Thank Everything you. else has been planned. Commissioners, other comments? Commissioner Smith. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Just to weigh in, I guess, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Ligurski was kind enough to come by my office that he wants to demolish and, uh, and visit with me about it. And I have no problems with that. I think, I think it's great. It's a, I, I think that for the long term, um, whether it be three or five commissioners looking at open meeting room, uh, it's always been an issue for us, just the layout, and it's awkward for people sitting and you know don't really have a place to stand, and it's it's been a, it's been a little herky jerky. So, just looking at it overall, I think that's a a great a great concept. Um, just make sure that uh, two of those commission chairs are removable, you know, in case we uh, in case we go back down to go back down to three. <laughs> about this is we will not be putting in stadium seating stadium seating is going to be a thing in the past so all of these will be removable um your guys will be of a little different quality and probably have wheels on them but they can still be rolled out if need be um but all the rest of them we can add subtract um the room uh can be better utilized for bigger meetings once once COVID's over we can put a lot of people in this room whether we want to or not that's up to you guys but we're not going to go back to the stadium seating that's an outdated model Thank you. Other comments, commissioners? Just ask Gene to clarify, are you saying that the seating and that's gonna be on wheels and it's not gonna be fastened? No, your guys, is, your guys would be on wheels. You guys would have movable chairs. The other ones would be movable chairs. They would not be bolted to the floor, but they'll be more like um, waiting room chairs or the ones that you see in offices that have four legs and could be moved around for spacing. That way, uh, when COVID comes back and we don't have to unbolt everything from the floor and redo the carpet, uh, we can just add more chairs in there. Thank you. One thought on the five chairs up front, if we're gonna continue to use that for planning and zoning, even if we were to eventually go down to three, that would still convene planning and zoning with the five up there, right, Gene? Correct. 
So it provides some actual better multi-use options for a, a meeting space in this in our area too. It, it does, and, and one of the things that I kind of um, I actually pick EDA's brain a little bit about this. We're going to talk about some other stuff. If if you look at a, a good multi-use room, um, mm -hmm. if you look over at the Justice Center at the Sheriff's Training Room, that can be used for a, a myriad of things. Whether you guys want to do that or not, it's your guys' room. It's up to you guys. But um, with the technology in there, um, with the way that we're going to concrete floor and do the AV, it can be used for different things as at your guys' choosing. Thank you, Gene. Thank you. Other comments, commissioners? My final comment would be is, is you know, we're, we're always talking about making things better for the public. I mean, we're here to serve the public and, and the uh, setups that we have, uh, uh, we always felt that we needed to improve on our, our present room. And of course, we're presently moving forward in that direction to do something with it, which is a plus, but we have an opportunity to make it uh, even more uh, multifaceted by the open meeting room, but uh, I also hear loud and clear what Commissioner John says, what may happen down the road a ways. We heard a public comment this morning about uh, going back to three commissioners. Uh, I believe that'll continue to come up. I believe uh, um, those that are three have conversations that go into five and those that are five have conversations going back three, so it'll never go away. Um, it's just a matter of the times and what's going on, but at the same token, we have an opportunity to improve our uh, meeting room and make it better for the public. Uh, even uh, presently, we don't have uh, decent presentation areas for our presenters, and sometimes it's uh, it's a little uh, uncomfortable. I'll just say that from sitting at the front of the table, and I've always looked for the opportunity to see that get done. Of course, at the same token, I look for the opportunity to get it done and as as cheap and as free as possible and we have an opportunity with that even though it may require some adjustment later on we do know and we do believe that at some point in time COVID-19 will be managed and we could be back to where social distancing uh, may or may not go away uh, but again too we the other belief out there is after COVID-19 what's next could it be another situation requiring social distancing and therefore until uh, the commission has an opportunity to really look at what the courthouse improvements may be down the road based on uh, any planning. Um, this does provide an opportunity for us to not only fix the room up, but also to expand it and to make it better for the public. So I don't know, Gene, what are we looking for for today? Mr. Chairman, I, I'm looking for a direction on which way you would like me to go to remodel this room. It's your guys' room. It's the public's room. Um, you know, I voiced my opinion on which one I feel is best. However, um, I will do whatever direction you guys lead me. Okay, thank you, Gene. You know, having, <laughs> I got to just say this when you say it's the public's room and that type thing, I think back to some of the school district meetings when the boardroom filled up with people <laughs> and I'm going well do we really really want to do that but we owe we owe the public that opportunity to come in as as many as possible and whatever groups they are so I, I just really think we need a larger area but you know I I don't know who's going to go tell them um, whomever it is Mark or Bonnie that they may move you know because we're looking at one of those offices or both of them you know and that type of thing so um, I I would he right wasn't shy to come and talk to me and tell me I was going to move. So you already it's, it's right up his right up his alley. <laughs> you already volunteered. You addressed yourself all by yourself. So I'm not worried about you. <laughs> Mr. Smith, I'll, uh, Commissioner Smith, I'll lay it back on your shoulders. And whoever you want to move, whatever office you think is best, I will go in and tell him. Oh, that. okay. Yeah. Fair enough. That uh, we'll, was going to we'll be part of my that. motion that the chairman had a sign and share with the with the people moving. Right. <laughs> the, the one thing that I did not point out, commissioners, is on the back of the open meeting room off of that is a door for you guys to go back into saw that. the main office where you guys have. So you're not walking through the public. You're not doing that kind of stuff. Um, the flow I with that like works that. a lot better. Thank you. And in answer to uh, the chairman doing this or that, I've been around the county enough that I know where there's empty offices in purchasing, sheriff's office, 
in other buildings other than this one. So if you leave it up to me, you might be blessed with my answer. Count me in. Count me in. <laughs> we, we have three over at Roden Bridge in Rock Springs. There you go. I'm telling you what. Yeah, there's even some over in the maintenance shop. But anyway, enough of that. I, I just really see an opportunity. I And I am cautious because of what Commissioner Johnson said. But I, I also see an opportunity of uh, making this better for the public. And, and it'd be a good decision for the public. And I'd like to see us move forward, Gene, with just me. I'm only one. So I'd like to see it move forward with the open meeting room. Uh, other commissioners, your thoughts? Consensus agreement or what? I'd agree. I'm ready to make a motion on it. <laughs> That's, you know what? If you want to put it in marble, go for it. Yeah, I'd like to make move, make a motion to move forward using the grant funding uh, to have Gene move forward on the open meeting room concept. And you're specifying COVID-19 grant funding. COVID-19 <laughs> CARES Act money that Christina received by grant. Yeah, CARES Act. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Smith. Any further discussion for the open meeting room design? No further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Does that work for Eugene? Uh, I guess that does. And if there's anything, you know, because I wanted to come to you guys first outside of talking to Commissioner Smith, um, if there's anything that comes up in the process, we looked at most of the duct work, um, everything like that. But if something comes up where this can't be done um, with more, now that we, we, we don't want to just, we didn't want to disturb people and have them in a store and tell you guys, okay, this, if there's something that comes up, I'll bring it to you the next meeting. But as far as we know right now, looking at the duct work, looking at the plans that we can completely do this ourselves. All right. Thank you, Gene. All right, with that, uh, we'll keep moving on. The next one will be, uh, I believe, tab H, approval of the coronavirus relief grant and agreement for Sweetwater County COVID-19 courthouse project. And with us is uh, Christina Marshall and Mr. Ligurski. And after this item, we'll take a break. So Christina, Jean, welcome. Uh, the floor is yours, Christina. Great. Well, good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. And uh, the last agenda item was a perfect segue into the actual coronavirus relief grant agreement for Speedwater County. So Jean was talking previously about one part of this uh, grant award, but Speedwater County was actually awarded $240,085 from the Office of State Lands and Investments. As you all discussed, uh, the term of this funding ends on September or December 30th, 2020. There is no required match. Uh, how, however, I would like to point out that regarding the commissioner's meeting room, uh, the proposal stated that the project would be complete. It would take about a month to complete. So part of proving that this is necessary expenditures is, is doing it timely, not waiting to the end. So I'm very happy to see you moving forward. Um, besides the adaptive reuse of the commissioner's meeting room, there's two other parts of this award. So first of all, just to be clear, the meeting room's budget is $172,786. This was considered a necessary project so that that you all could host a live meeting both by Zoom and have uh, citizens be able to attend that meeting. Um, the second part of this grant award is for the courthouse public health modifications and uh, PPE. As you know, around the courthouse, we have plexiglass, uh, Dropbox, we have Zoom licenses, et cetera. Uh, we will be awarded $12,069 for those costs that have actually been incurred. And then finally, we have those door attendants and we budgeted for payroll through December of 2020 uh, for a total budget of $55,230. So exceptionally, expenses that were incurred on or after March 1st associated with uh, this project proposal will be reimbursed. And of course- 
<laughs> Technology is an important part of this project, and so that's why Tim is here to answer any questions about the technology. Jean also uh, talked about the room, but the door attendants are actually under him as well. So with that, I would be happy to answer any questions um, or entertain the motion, or you can ask Tim and Jean. All right, thank you, Christina. Commissioners, any questions for Christina, Jean, and or Tim? Commissioners? Free money is good money. So yeah, I, know. I said I stay. I agree with you. Run it, grab it, and run. Um, all right. So if there's no more questions, uh, commissioners, uh, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve and authorize the chairman to sign the coronavirus relief grant agreement for the Sweetwater County COVID-19 courthouse project. So moved. I got a motion by Commissioner Shanefield. Is there a second, Mr. Commissioner Lloyd? I guess I'll second. You, 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 just by a smidge, just by a smidge. Any further discussion, commissioners? Any further discussion? Without any further discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Good job, way to go. This is important. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Christina. And thanks, Tim. With that, we're going to stop and take a 10 minute break. Oh, good. Then we'll come back to tab I, which is facilities update with Mr. Ligurski and Mr. McLean. Thank you.
we ready? As soon as I'm waiting for Jeff and for Lauren. I guess we could move forward as a three member commission. Oh no, there's four. Wait on me. <laughs> we'll get them. <laughs> oh, funny you guys are, you're killing me. Okay, we're ready. I'd like to call this uh, Board of County Commissioners meeting for uh, August 18th back to order and moving on with our agenda. Next up is under tab I, facilities update. Mr. Ligurski, Mr. McLean, gentlemen, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> County Commissioners. I'll, I'll go first just to get us up to speed on this issue. Um, a number of years ago, um, after um, a number of um, early retirements, um, we had vacancies in offices. Um, and then <clears throat> with the conclusion of the construction of the Justice Center, um, the county had a number of facilities um, that were vacant. Um, in addition, during the discussion uh, of the possible construction of the road and bridge uh, facility. Um, there, the intent of that project was to further consolidate essentially three or four buildings into one uh, building, uh, thereby creating potentially some other vacancies. <clears throat> so um, at that time, um, as you know, the facilities committee put together a report <clears throat> on each of those facilities, including critical data on the age, size, um, potential use, um, pros and cons of the building, um, and some critical data on the building, and presented that uh, to the board um, some months ago. <clears throat> um, since that time, uh, the um, obviously there's been some uh, change in the direction with respect to the combined road and bridge facility. And we have completed vacating all of the offices out of the 731 C Street building, which is the old hospital. And so um, basically uh, that gets us kind of where we are uh, today. And um, the uh, and now that I think Gene's up to speed with all the facilities and um, has information in the do solution system. I think he can talk a little bit more specifically where we're at today um, with respect to those facilities and the communication that he's had. Thank you, Gary. Okay, Gene. Um, with that, just to, to kind of highlight on the dude solutions, like uh, Commissioner Johnson talked about, um, we're under a two week trial period. All the data is in there. Um, and we're con constantly adding, or I'm constantly adding more data to it um, as we see fit. So we have a, a centralized database for all of this. Um, I have a meeting um, tomorrow, I believe, with uh, some component units because you guys okayed uh, a facility condition assessment for some buildings out of the events complex, um, the libraries, Roosevelt School, um, a couple of the parks, and also Southwest Counseling. And so we're going to do a kickoff meeting. I've invited the people that are interested in those various agencies to be able to join this. Uh, some of them have said, yeah, they'll be on there, no problem. Some of them have opted to just let me handle it, which is fine either way. Um, and then we're going to schedule a date for dude to come up here and to do the exact same thing that they did to our primary buildings again. And then they'll turn over a report sometime, hopefully in November. So we'll have a really good idea in November, December to be able to digest that and start on with our capital planning process for, I would say, about 85% of the critical buildings in the county. We'll do another one next year. Um, to kind of wrap that up, but we'll get a very good handle on um, all of our large, very large size buildings. Um, with that, as Gary alluded, we have several buildings out there um, that have been vacated um, through work of staff and, and other people getting out of there. The C Street building was the last one. Uh, juvenile probation um, is finally, we still have to move some stuff of hers out of there, but she's got it all boxed up and went through stuff and downsized considerably. So I want to thank her for that. Um, but of an interesting note, um, I know some of you guys were on a stakeholders call during the COVID thing when this came up, but these uh, Western Wyoming Community College is actually going through a study right now to look at their nursing program. And their nursing program, 
is under the direction of, of trying to find some alternatives that'll be done in January. Um, Gary floated out the idea to them that, hey, the C Street building used to be an old hospital. Uh, matter of fact, my mom actually graduated from a nursing program there back in the 50s. And I know a lot of people were born there. I know a ton of nurses that went up there. So it's got a lot of historical value that ties in really nice. So I approached Dr. Dale and uh, Burt Reynolds with the uh, facility maintenance up there to maybe come and look at it just to see if they were interested in it. We have that scheduled for this coming Thursday to look at that. That will go into their process. Um, and like if they're looking at uh, putting a new building up, they're looking at renovating some stuff, they're looking at it, what else is out there. Um, so this is just a way to be able to do that. Um, you know, of course, we won't make any commitments. That's our, your guys' decision, but it'll help them finalize their plans and actually look at all the buildings that are possible out there. I think it has an awesome tie-in with the history. Um, it's an awesome use of the building, and it's plenty of space for them to go forward and be able to grow into. Um, with that, I also have another meeting with Klein Wyoming. With COVID going on, everybody is looking for spaces um, to be able to hold classes in, to be able to socially distance and stuff like that. <laughs> Klein Wyoming uh, just wants to explore different buildings and see if we have any space that they may be able to use or rent from us for three to four months. We don't know how that'll go, but they don't know the rooms that we have and they've looked at other options of trying to rent rooms and, and have come into some roadblocks for that. So I'll be meeting with them. Um, Roosevelt School is kind of an interesting one uh, where Goldmauer Senior Citizen Center is. Uh, we were approached um, last summer. Uh, somebody wanted to come and look at it, I'll put some, I'll possibly put a child daycare in there. We met with them, kind of showed them the thing and I don't know exactly what happened to that, but with uh, school district number two, looking at possibly putting that into um, a school building just for the district employees and some other things are happening around in the community. Um, that discussion has come up again and we're actually going to meet with the city of Green River, the um, school board and some other interested parties to see if, if maybe the county is willing to help them out up there. It would be a, a good use of the space. It would be possibly a good revenue generator for Golden Hour, however that happens. Uh, more importantly, it's a good value added thing to the community. Uh, when we talk about things that are value added, one of the things that Eric has stumbled into and um, the city of Green River is, hey, if we move in people, what is the available childcare? What is it? What can we do? Where's it at? And that has always been a roadblock for them. And maybe if we all get together and cooperate and come up with a solution that can work community wide, uh, we'll be better for that. So that's actually one of the other things. Um, another interesting one came up and it kind of segues into the STIP plan. Uh, that YDOT talked about is they have federal funding out there for transportation alternatives. And one of the things that transportation alternatives is uh, the star busing program. Um, and star bus, I don't know if many of you guys know this, but star bus was originally located in the road and bridge building in rock Springs in the upstairs. That was where their offices were. Um, about a year ago, they were looking for different areas. They came down and looked at the building again. Um, but that is one of those places in this grand scheme of, of things uh, you know, when Lagoon Road goes, that that is a good possibility for them to be able to use some federal funding to upgrade that building and possibly purchase it for them. And what I would like to do is, is more either the liaison do that or myself, you know, uh, Commissioner Lloyd, to kind of open those discussions with them and, and see where it goes to see if they're still interested. Don't know. You know, everything has changed in the last four to six months. Um, we don't know where everybody's at, but it's still a, a viable use for them. So they can fit all their buses in there. They can centralize everything. I know they have just, um, as of about four or five months ago, they signed a new lease for their administrative people um, for a multi-year contract. So that would be, but you know, this is going to take multi-years to be able to do that. But um, I, it's a good use. It's a nice synergy for them. And there's also, like I said, some federal money out there. So I just want to kind of bring you guys up to speed on stuff that the building committee has been working on. Uh, you know, nothing is final. We don't make any promises. It's all your guys' decision. But there's good discussion out there and there's good talks out there and with um, these buildings being available and, and us knowing exactly what's in them through the facilities committee's work that they did all last year, um, their valuable assets that we can you know, help other people possibly, other public agencies possibly move into. So with that, I'll answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. McLean. Uh, any questions for Mr. Ligurski or Mr. McLean? Yes, Mr. Chairman, not a, not a question, uh, just uh, a comment. Uh, uh, the, the C Street facility, uh, is that's an excellent, excellent uh, idea there to, to, for the colleagues to put the training back up in, into that facility. And I, I think 
uh, as you show that to them or whatever you do, I really suggest that uh, you emphasize that uh, that we're, and I, I would assume that my co-commissioners are on this, they understand that the, the historical importance of that facility to uh, not only Sweetwater County, but the city of Rock Springs. It's ideal location. Uh, it's got a campus that would fit in perfectly with the, the teaching concept. And uh, whoever come up with that idea, I, I really think you did a great job on that. And your other thoughts, I think, are, are valid. Again, it's uh, uh, an example, I think, of the commission giving direct general direction to staff, and they've done an excellent job with that. And I, I applaud the facilities group for doing that, especially Gary and, and Jamie. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Other commissioners? Gary? Did you have um, Yeah, the, just the only thing I, I would add to that is um, just, I think as of, of yesterday, maybe Friday, um, with respect to the Roosevelt School as a potential daycare site, the school district only had um, eight people that had signed up for uh, daycare potentially in, in their setting. So they, they're not moving ahead with that. Um, CDC has canceled the, the child care, the daycare at the CDC in Green River. Um, and so, um, uh, and then in addition to that, the city's had a request, a couple requests recently for uh, small uh, daycare in their in home daycare, five to 10 people size. And, and so they're interested in this solution also. Um, finally, in, in the stakeholder meetings that we've had, I know Doc's been in a number of those, uh, Lauren's been in a few, and, and I think Jeff, or Roy's been in a few, and Jeff has also. Um, the industry uh, and hospital, um, Aspen, and some other uh, larger uh, entities within the community um, have expressed concern both for their employees uh, and just general for the attractiveness of the community relative to daycare. And so, um, you know, obviously that's not a realm that we move in. We've tried to invite everybody to the meeting that has expressed interest and opened up the invitation if there were others that people um, thought needed to come. So we can try to explore whether that facility makes uh, sense. Uh, also, uh, that facility is adjacent to the city park. Um, it was part of a, of, of a facility transfer with the city of Green River um, way back when. Um, that facility uh, recently uh, obtained fiber optic into the facility. So there's fiber optic connectivity in there, um, which has um, you know, some potential benefit um, uh, in terms of meeting any online education needs or, or what have you. Um, so that's basically where we're at with that, just trying to see if there's something we can do with that building at set vacant. The only other thing I'd add is that um, many of those rooms were, were still store some of the election equipment. Um, we've got a plan, I think Gene has a, has a, has a tentative plan of, of storing that in the facility so um, Cindy's folks can access the equipment and test it regularly and store supplies in those areas. And so obviously we didn't want to try to do that in the middle of the ongoing election. The old election is an equipment has been collected by the state and they have taken that away. So um, um, the time seems right as we uh, have vacated or will soon vacate some of that space to look at um, some, some other options. Thank you, Gary. Uh, questions, comments, commissioners for either Gene or Gary? More? Well, I think it's wonderful news. I, I'm excited about the inventory for the uh, capital buildings, Gene, with Dude Solutions and that type of thing, plus the component units that you're going to move out into and take a look at. And it's really going to help, I think, for that future planning for capital improvements. and. Uh, I, I agree with uh, everything I was hearing changed in the last three to four months that Gary is saying and that the needs have changed in both communities to where they need to look at some things to help um, as people come into it. And Gary brought up a good point uh, 
about the mines and people coming into our communities is uh, we do knew, know that the real estate is moving quickly, but those majority of those buyers for homes are out of staters. And uh, on the commissioner's call again yesterday, that was a conversation. Gillette's getting an influx as well as uh, we are in Sweetwater County of people seeing Wyoming as a place to move during these um, pandemic times. And uh, they're selling everything and coming here without jobs. So it goes right into play with Gary says, what are we gonna have in these communities for, for uh, child care and that type of thing. So uh, good report, gentlemen, if there's, um, not any more questions or comments, we'll move on. Um, did you need any direction, Gene, or? No, I just had more of just uh, kind of throwing everybody in and, and where we're going. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes. Um, a lot of dedicated people that are, that are pushing this forward. So just wanted to make sure that you guys were abreast of everything. No, well, appreciate what you guys are doing along with everything else you're doing. Thank you very much. All right, with that, we'll continue to move on with our agenda the next up will be a, uh, again, it'll be a request approval to extend employment of seasonal truck drivers, and that'll be Mr. McGlur Mr. Ligurski and Mr. McLean again. So uh, the floor is yours, Gary. Gene. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, during the, the budget process uh, this year, uh, uh, Gene at Public Works Department and Road and Bridge had uh, budgeted uh, two seasonal positions, uh, truck driver positions, um, to a, a total of, I think, just a little over $25,000. Um, in the process of recruiting for those positions, we were approached by the folks from Climb Wyoming um, to see, uh, they had some folks that were, uh, had recently graduated, in fact, I think just graduated, and they were looking to place those folks uh, in um, uh, occupations consistent with their training. Um, and so uh, we were able to do that. We placed them uh, driving uh, for uh, Road and Bridge. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with the program, in order to sort of provide that experience, um, they reimbursed us um, for um, the uh, period um, for which they uh, worked. Um, that reimbursement was about $10,500. And, um, and so the, uh, essentially, uh, from a budget standpoint, we're neutral uh, in, in those areas. And I think what Gene's requesting is to um, extend um, that seasonal use. The program has worked very well by I think nearly all accounts. Um, it's provided some diversity for the Climb Wyoming candidates in terms of uh, uh, diversity of equipment and exposure working, not just like over the road, but in a construction setting. And uh, we would like to uh, have them extend for some months um, as, uh, as budgeted funds allow with, within the department. Um, this has been especially helpful, uh, and I'm sure Gene can elaborate, but we've had uh, two to three people out uh, during this period with uh, major uh, health uh, issues. And this has allowed some of the projects to continue uh, so that they could uh, drive all gravel while other people operating the equipment and continued operations. So we're just requesting to um, fill, uh, essentially continue with the individuals we have using the budgeted funds um, that were originally approved. Thank you, Gary. Gene, do you have anything to add? Um, the only thing I have to add is um, just uh, what a great program it is. You know, I worked in the construction industry for 25 years. I know when I moved here, um, Climb Wyoming was just getting started and Arnie Lewis was instrumental in that because he would hire whole entire classes of truck drivers and put them to work in successful careers. And with the two ladies that we've been able to work with, um, they're very uh, different in their personalities, but their skills are there. And the thing is, it's just exposure, time in the seat. And they've got time on, you know, belly dumps, water trucks. They both, when we, we have to interview them in a three week and a six week time period, um, they both expressed interest in learning other pieces of equipment, which we were trying to give them opportunities. But one thing about this, as Gary alluded to, is with the different things that go on during the summer vacations, um, we had some major illnesses, um, surgeries in the road bridge department. Uh, with the help of these ladies and, the, and then just the emergency planning that we do, we were able to 
do the CMAC project, which typically takes three months, um, just a little over two months in a week. Um, and that's by keeping, you know, not extending the budget out, but using our resources wisely, using the things out there and, and plugging some holes with some seasonal employees that provided a, a great skill for us and a great opportunity for them. Thank you, Gene. Uh, commissioners, questions before we move on with a motion? Any Mr. questions? Yeah, Go ahead. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I've been involved with, uh, obviously, I'm liaison with Gene and Gary, and uh, this is a win-win situation. I, I think it's good for the Klang, Wyoming, and it's extremely good for the state of, or, uh, Sweetwater County, and I strongly support uh, continuing it. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Other commissioners? Mr. Chairman, can I make just one additional comment? Um, the real goal of the program um, is, is to, to secure, help individuals secure um, full-time employment um, and um, by getting opportunities into areas that were non-traditional, perhaps work. And um, from our standpoint, obviously we've been discussing early retirement. We'll discuss it some more at the next meeting perhaps. But if we have vacancies, um, you know, these might be some areas that we'd have opportunity to fill some vacancies from. Um, this is a good trial period. The other thing that I've, I think we've discussed a little bit, as we downsize the workforce in, in, in this area since 2011, we've reduced 11 positions from the Road and Bridge Department. But as we reduce those numbers, our flexibility to deal with things like illness, injury, um, during the uh, YDOT presentation, you saw all the different funds. If we get certain road project funds, um, our ability to scale work up and down um, uh, is, is very limited. So, um, you know, we've had a number of conversations trying to find a way to develop a contingent workforce rather than having a bunch of full-time positions um, that sometimes we don't need or underutilized. We need a few positions that we can scale up, maybe work part-time. And then obviously that'd be a good candidate pool maybe to draw a full-time position to become available. So um, I, all the way around, I think this program, um, as well as the experience we had with the two individuals, um, supports the current work program in the department, as well as the financial goals of the county. Thank you, Gary. Any other comments, commissioners, questions? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Shainfield. I just wanted to say thank you to both Gary and Jean for um, working with the Climb Wyoming program. I know this is new um, this year, and um, I've had the opportunity to work with Brittany at Climb and to help them with their interviews. And um, when hearing that we were opening these seasonal positions, had the opportunity to kind of make a little bit of a connection there. And they are very, very thankful um, for the partnership with the county and um, for us being able to hire their two, two participants. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Shanefield. Any other comments, commissioners? Commissioners, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Johnson. I make a motion that we approve the request to continue the employment of these two individuals uh, from Climb Wyoming as requested by uh, Road and Bridge, Mr. Ligursky. We have a motion to extend the hiring of the seasonal help. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shane Field. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Appreciate that. It's a wonderful thing for Climb Wyoming as well as for Sweetwater County. Good job, Gene, Gary. All right, next up on our list is restaff uh, vacant positions in detention center. And joining us is not only Mr. McLean, but our sheriff, Mr. Grossnickel. Sheriff Grossnickel, welcome. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Thank you. The floor is yours, Mr. McLean and Mr. Grossnickel. Mr. Chairman, County Commissioners, um, Sheriff Grossnickel is, is requested to restaff a recent vacancy in the detention center. Um, um, I, you know, with the current um, uh, hiring freeze, um, felt like it was appropriate to come back and discuss this with, with the board. Um, as I've discussed with the board many times and have done 
um, some pretty extensive presentations to go through and explain the staffing levels in the detention center. Um, the, the detention center, I was involved with the original migration from the linear facility that we were in that only held um, maybe 30 people uh, to the facility we have now, which has a maximum capacity of over 211. Um, and it's a fundamentally different design. And, and that design has a minimum number of staffing to cover the posts within that facility. So as an example, two people, an adult, one in juvenile, one in booking, uh, one rover, so on and so forth. Um, there really, it, 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 there's no safe way to staff the facility with less than we're staffing it now. That staffing arrangement was done by a, the transition team. Um, we've addressed the posts and for the level of supervision that they have, both officer safety and inmates safety, um, there just isn't a, a safe way to staff the facility at lower numbers than that. So I would support and recommend to the board that we restaff this position. Thank you, Gary. Uh, Sheriff Grossnickel, anything to add? You're muted, Sheriff. Sheriff, you're muted. Sorry about that. I just echo what Mr. McLean says. Um, there, there are minimum standards that we have to have as far as the detention officers there for the safety of it, the entire facility. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, commissioners, questions or comments? Commissioners, any comments? <clears throat> yeah, I'd just like to say I thank um, uh, Sheriff Grossnickel for the letter explaining the need and, and, um, and you know, when we went to look at a phrase, one of the reasons I wanted to still have some leeway with situations like this where positions are definitely needed for health and safety reasons and legal litigation reasons and just um, quality of service. So I see this as a position that we should restaff. Thank you, Commissioner Lloyd. Other comments? Commissioners, what's your pleasure? Commissioner Shainfield. I will make a motion to restaff the detention officer position immediately as presented. We have a motion to restaff as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Smith. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you for joining us, Sheriff. Appreciate your time and appreciate the work everybody's doing out there. You've had some uh, particular interesting moments this last month and pretty trying on your staff and everybody and they've rose to the occasion and we do appreciate that very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and commissioners and uh, I will express that to everybody that's been, been involved with those. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to tab L is it originally was a request to approval of a facility usage indemnity agreement with the election polling place at the Catholic Church but we amended that in our to ratify the facility usage indemnity agreement for the election polling place at Catholic Church. Uh, Gary, I think you were aboard for that and Cindy Lane. So Cindy, the floor is yours or Gary. Yeah, I'll uh, address initially. Um, each time we have an election, um, the county clerk has to secure various locations for polling places. Um, the Catholic Church in Green River has been um, that location for a number of years. Um, in so doing, the Catholic Church has an agreement uh, so that any accidents or injuries that occur while conducting the election are not their responsibilities, but will be handled by the county's uh, insurance. As it so happens, the uh, renewal of the property and liability insurance um, um, was or executed after the board approved the fiscal year uh, uh, 2021 budget. Um, so by the, we had to submit proof of insurance. By the time we got that and got that to them and got on the board, um, we were essentially at the uh, general or primary election time. So I contacted three of the commissioners uh, to um, review after John had reviewed that agreement. And I provided Cindy, who provided to the Catholic Church, proof of insurance. Um, the, 
the uh, county commission chairman signed that agreement so that we were in place to secure the polling place. And the request before the uh, board today is to uh, ratify that agreement. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Ms. Lane, do you have anything to add? You're muted, you're muted. <laughs> you're still muted, there you go. Okay, I'm good. All right, no, thank you for that. Um, it would have been approved hopefully today, but that was the um, Catholic Church said they needed it before today. So I appreciate the signing of that letter so we could have the polling location open today. Thank you. Any questions for our clerk, county clerk, Ms. Lane or Mr. McLean, commissioner? With no questions, I would entertain a motion that uh, we approve the ratified agreement that was signed by the chairman, the indemnity agreement. I've so moved. moved. Got a motion by Commissioner Lloyd. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Commissioner Smith. Any further discussion? Further discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Moving on to tab N, which is a human service agreements. Uh, that will be presented by our county clerk, Miss Lane. Good morning, Chairman, County Commissioners. Um, I have the authorization for human service contracts from the YWCA for $280,532. University of Wyoming Extension, the 4-H contract for $47,094. The Boys and Girls Club of Sweetwater County for $46,170. The Youth Home Incorporated for $154,670. Climb Wyoming for $5,000. Volunteer Informational Reservice, Referral Service for $104,500. And the Golden Hour Senior Center for $218,150. These amounts um, total $856,116 and they were approved during the budget process. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Lane. Commissioners, any questions for Ms. Lane regarding the human service agreements? If there being no questions, then I would entertain a motion that uh, we approve and author approve the uh, human service agreements and authorize the chair to sign each individual agreement. So moved. We have a motion by Commissioner Shanefield. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Lloyd. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. They're all complete and they will be signed. Our next- Mr. Chairman, I think you skipped over it. Over what? Tab M. Which was, oh my God, you're exactly you right. It. Thank you, Miss Lane. We'll go back to yes. Tab M. Okay. Which is a uh, publication of name, position, and base uh, salaries of amounts to be posted of county employees and elected officials. Go ahead. Yes, what we have is the pursuant to Wyoming um, statute 18-3-516B, publication of name, position, base annual salary and the amount of overtime pay to each full-time employee and each elected official. And this is to be posted in our county newspapers. So it will be posted in the Green River Star. Um, this year we, um, the statute was changed to include overtime paid. Um, previously, we just had the amount of annual salary. Now, if you make any overtime, that is included. And we just have to report the total amount, but these, these amounts that are listed include overtime. Thank you, Ms. Lane. Commissioners, any questions? I have one. What was the purpose of including overtime, Ms. Lane? Um, I, I don't know the state legislators, I think want to know how much everyone is actually getting paid and not just what their annual salary salary is. I fair enough. I didn't want to that. I know. I just thought I'd ask. I just, yeah. 
Okay. Any other questions, commissioners? With that, commissioners, what's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Johnson. I make a motion to approve the publication of uh, positions and salaries as requested uh, by a county clerk and required by law. Okay, we have a motion to um, publish for publication. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Shanefield. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, motion carries. Thank, thank you. you. You are so welcome. Thank you, Ms. Lane, and thank you, Commissioner Johnson, for bringing that to your attention. Now, next up is the another amended item to our agenda under tab O, which will be all West communication update. And uh, not only did commissioners receive a letter uh, regarding the uh, update, but also here to present is um, Mr. Carollo, and I believe uh, Mr. Walkenhorst, is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Good morning, gentlemen, and welcome. And I'll turn the floor over to whichever one of you want to take the lead, Marty or Jack. Okay. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon to each of you. And uh, yeah, I'll take the lead here. And I appreciate, we appreciate the opportunity to be part of the uh, county commissioner's meeting. Uh, first off, I'd just like to open it up if if any of you after receiving the letter uh, have questions um, I just wanted to open that up first before I explain a little bit of our reasoning and the whys and the what's so okay uh, commissioners we got a letter if you had a chance to review it do you have any questions yes mr. chairman mr. Johnson the reason that uh, you're here today is, uh, as you recall, Jack, a uh, couple, three years ago, you uh, indicated when you took over from uh, uh, from the Corollas that it was going to be better, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and uh, in some of the circles I travel here, especially recently, uh, it's primarily with the seniors, uh, they're not too happy with what's going on. They they have gotten kind of used to when they want to watch TV, they push a button and the TV comes on. They want to change channels. There's another button they push, they change channels. When they're through, they shut, push that same button again and it shuts down. And they're very, very concerned as to where their TV is going to come from. And so uh, I, I think you're overlooking the fact, not you necessarily, Jack, but I think all West is overlooking the fact that they serve us a large number of seniors in Sweetwater County, and they're not too happy with what you're doing. Possibly part of it's because they don't understand, but uh, uh, they're not happy. And uh, and I don't think in speaking for them, of course, I am one of them, uh, but speaking for them is this this isn't in line with what you promised was going to happen when you purchased the Corollas out of uh, out their, purchased their business. One of the things in the letter that you say is, uh, on November 1st, you'll discontinue our traditional cable TV service at that time. You know, you're going to do it, so they have no choice. But then later in the letter, you say, plus an easy to use interface, expanded options, and more control, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they question that. Uh, they received this letter, not the one that I have in front of me, but they received this letter and they, they, they're not so sure. Then Further down in the letter, you say you sign up for All West, et cetera, and it says uh, uh, with free internet install. That was uh, for a certain period of time, for three months. But then what happens? And I'm going to give you these questions, and then you can answer them all at one time. Then what happens? Then you say you're going to give uh, each of them a free Amazon Fire Stick. Is that for each TV set? Uh, some one of the seniors said he's got 11 TV sets in his house. He's going to have to have 11 Amazon fire sticks. And uh, then uh, you've got this asterisk here that says option one requires one year all West TV, etc. And it says uh, after one year, then what's the cost going to be? So those are the questions I have, uh, Jack, and I appreciate that very much. And I also would like to uh, 
reemphasize, and I've said many times, we're very, very appreciative of Marty. Uh, you know, we all know Marty and we know the Corovo family. And whenever we have a problem, uh, we can turn to him. And you're very wise in keeping Marty online, on, 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 in your organization because he, he's a godsend. Oh, one other point that, I, <laughs> that they brought up while I'm thinking is then you close your office down there so those seniors can't even get to you. So that, that doesn't set too well with them. And then when you can get to them, the people in that office, does, they don't seem to know what's going on. So anyway, Jack... Uh, I know it's not all your fault, uh, but uh, you know, I work for those people. And so those are my questions. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. That I, uh, I, I, some of those are some of the questions I had as well. Uh, one other one I would add to it is, is, you know, one of the biggest things we run into with these streaming outfits and, and, and uh, whether I like it or not, with some of the dish TVs is, local news and i prefer wyoming over utah but at the same token uh, i don't get wyoming and, and with these streaming outfits uh, sometimes local is delayed a day sometimes it's not so i think locals are going to be a huge question but i really expected the question from wally commissioner johnson was uh people asking him is uh how long would that fire stick last for lighting a bonfire outside i mean you know Sorry, Wally. I, I missed that one. <laughs> I looked at it and I go, I'm going, when you said they're asking how many fire sticks, so I'm thinking the first question should be is, what's a fire stick? <laughs> I can assure you, those people, these people are bringing it up, they don't know, no, 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 nor do I. I not know what a fire stick was till a year and a half ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> anyway, enough of that. Uh, I think, uh, you can answer those questions or you can wait until other commissioners have questions. That's entirely up to you, Jack and Marty. I, I, I think we're open. Um, there's quite a few questions that have been posed, so we'll try and answer them. And if, if we forget some, please remind us here. We can do that. We're good at that. Okay, that's great. Um, you know, we've been, it's been almost three years since, since we purchased Sweetwater. And boy, if, uh, if anybody could have uh, read the crystal ball as to where we would be three years from, from that point, you're doing better than I. But uh, kind of, we'll try and, we'll try and uh, take each question as we can here. Um, boy, the, the pay TV, the cable TV market is changing very rapidly. Um, the number of cable customers that we have today is about half of what we had when we purchased Sweetwater uh, three years ago uh, for various reasons. Um, you know, the costs continue to go up, the content providers continue to increase costs. Um, other options are out there, uh, be it streaming, a, a Netflix, a Hulu, a YouTube, things like that. Um, people, uh, get their entertainment in, in a lot of different ways now. Um, I fully understand because I'm, I'm in that age group. I'm an over 60 person. <laughs> um, I like to sit down and, and hit a couple of buttons and watch TV. I don't have a lot of time to do that, but I like to do that. Um, so the, the product is changing. The market is changing. Um, how we deliver the service is changing and the, the dynamics of the industry continues to change. Um, kind of on the question of with the, with traditional TV going away and all West TV being there, uh, will those options still be there? Um, I have all West TV at my house. I can go in, I have two remotes. I have the remote for the TV and the remote for the fire stick as we were talking about fire sticks. And I don't know how well it would start a fire. I haven't tried that. <laughs> um, a few years ago, I didn't know what a fire stick was, uh, but it is, it is pretty simple to use. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, it's very similar to, to what they have now. Uh, the question of, uh, you know, with All West TV, you do have to have an All West internet connection. 
and realizing that there are probably a lot of the older folks that don't have an internet connection now. And so that would be an additional cost to have that interconnection, internet connection with the, uh, with the TV connection. Um, but along with that, there would be some reduced costs on the TV side in that you don't need set top boxes. Um, the packages are a little bit less expensive. Um, with All West TV, everything is in HD, so you're not paying a, a separate HD charge. And DVR is available up to 100 hours, so you're not paying um, additional DVR charges. Um, and those things could, our, our customer service people would be happy to work through and answer any questions that individuals, individual customers have in that regard, um, regarding those things. Um, as we continue to, uh, you know, as we continue to look at uh, what we've been doing in Rock Springs, Green River, um, broadband is really the driving force and that's what people want. Um, just in the last year, we've, we've uh, uh, connected over 600 new residential and, and commercial customers uh, with broadband in the Rock Springs, Green River area. So that's another thing that's really driving us and say, where do we go? from here. Um, video is definitely a viable market, a viable uh, service, but it's not one, um, it's not one that's not going to continue to change. Um, reading a report just recently said uh, just in the last quarter alone, the second quarter of 2020, that uh, over 2 million uh, subscribers uh, cut the cord and, and, and disconnected uh, pay TV services and a, an estimate that another 2 million that normally would have uh, subscribed to those services did not. And so that's a, about a 7 to 8 percent uh, decline, uh, annual decline if that, if that keeps going. So that's just a few things in regards to uh, where we're at, where we're going, kind of what our thought process is. Um, remind me of some of the other questions that, that you had, commissioners. Yeah, Jack, one of them was that, uh, that 1995 per month for three months, then what? Okay, um, on the internet, the internet connection, uh, 1995, and that's up to a gig. Um, after three months, a 100 meg internet connection would be 59.95. That's the normal cost of a 100 meg internet connection. Um, the question on the Fire Stick, it would be one. The offer is one Fire Stick. On that, um, not it would not be 11 uh, if, for that individual that has 11 TVs. Um, I don't know the exact uh, cost on a fire stick, but it's, I think I got one recently, it was about 40 to $45. I got one from Amazon for a second TV in my house. So, so I, I, the answer to that, uh, Jack, is that one for every TV set? No, one, one per subscription, as far as free, but you would, uh, you would need one for each TV. Yeah, that, that does it. And then the other last question I had is uh, option one requires an alt TV, et cetera. And then, then you answered that question, I guess, 59.95. Yes. Okay. Any other questions from other commissioners or uh, Commissioner Weldine or Commissioner Johnson? The uh, Jack, one other question is, is Without going in and looking at what your uh, uh, package is like, but, uh, what 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 locals are you going to carry? Utah or Wyoming? Um, Marty, kind of help me with that. Where what do we have right now? Yes, yeah, so right now we do carry both the uh, locals out of Casper and also the channels out of out of Salt Lake. Uh, our contracts, though we're going into retrans, going into next year, 
uh, retrans can always be a tricky business, depending on what the, what the broadcasters are going to force upon the, the providers to be able to offer. But at this point, our intention is to keep on the Salt Lake and the Casper channels uh, on the All West TV. Thank you. The other question, too, is uh, anytime you have a changeover, there's always uh, a thought of uh, learning to train. And I know the difficulty. I consider myself pretty tech savvy. Don't ask Wally that, if that's true or not. Um, I consider myself pretty tech savvy, but uh, when it comes to using devices, dealing with streaming TV and that, how much time are your uh, people going to spend with, and, and kids pick it up immediately. I'm talking about my generation older. You know, we need to reboot every now and then to understand technology, some of it day to day until we get used to it. So what, you know, what, what are we going to offer? What, what are you thinking of doing to help people to learn to use that service, especially our seniors? Um, I think our marketing person is on, but I can't see her here. Um, one, I mean, one thing that we've talked about, uh, Marty and I have talked about, um, and it's a little harder with, uh, with COVID, um, but in the past, and I think I can speak fairly confidently, Commissioner Welding, that this would be the same moving forward, um, our both our customer service representatives and our technicians um, have been very willing and management has been very willing to let them invest the time, you know, within reason, um, but as much as they possibly can in, in uh, talking through and, and helping individuals learn how to use the system. Um, as I said, it's a little harder with COVID. Um, I mean, we're still technicians are going into uh, customers' homes and new customers' homes every day with masks and, and proper PPE and, and physical distancing and all of those things. Um, our uh, front offices are not open right now, you know, to the public uh, for the various reasons. But uh, there again, our customer service reps are either in the office or working from home and very willing to, uh, to take the time that's needed uh, to work through the new system with, with customers and, and with folks of all, of all ages. Um, and kind of back to what I mentioned before, I was a little slow to migrate to the new system for the various reasons that you're talking about. Um, but once I did it and once I got going, um, it's, I actually like it better than what I had before. So right. Ho hopefully that kind of answers your question. Uh, it, it does. I just think about that. Marty? Yeah, I was, I was going to say we, we have just recently opened the Rock Springs offices from one to five um, with proper social distancing that comes in. So that, that has changed. And the other thing is we, we also have, um, you know, we talk about the TV product and the, the prices that have gone up substantially over the years. And um, it has been the programmers that have driven those costs, not the cost that it costs us to do it. Um, so one of the things that this does is we can't control those costs. We either take the programming or we don't, but we can, through this product, offer a much better value with the DVR, the high definition, start over, restart, video on demand, you catch a movie, 30 minutes into it, you can start over. Those add value. And the value is, is, is very important um, once you get a chance to use it. And that, that, those are the features that are that drove us to this, this product. Um, but the other thing is we, we do have um, a small converter. Uh, we, we, we'd like people to get away and minimize our costs as much, but there are some small converters that we have that do look very much like a traditional converter. You turn them on, it goes right to all West TV and you, you watch the channel, you have the guide, you have all the things on there. Uh, they do have the other smart TV features kind of behind the scenes, but for a lot of people, 
All they want is just that simple interface and this does provide it okay. with the extra bonuses of the DVR and all those other features. Thank you, Marty. Any other questions for Marty or Jack at this point in time, Commissioner? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Shainfield. I don't have a question. I just wanted to tell um, Marty and Jack, um, congratulations on the three projects. Um, thank you for putting in um, for the expansion um, for Border Cokeville and Smith's Fork. Um, as many people know, Smith's Fork is only going to serve eight customers. So a build out is not economical for a lot of um, providers or any providers. And so this CARES Act funding um, has allowed All West to reach out and provide those services um, and, and get the infrastructure in place to provide services to those very rural people. So thank you. Great, good in yeah. Great information. Thank you, Lauren. Well, um, and, yeah, so I'm sorry, Jack, I'm gonna step in here. To that, to that end, we talk a lot about, and Lauren and I are on, a, on an economic development and, and one of the questions we go into is we're getting ready to build out Kemmerer as well. Uh, we start that project this week uh, with fiber to Kemmerer and Diamondville. And um, what the thing we have learned over specifically the last couple of years and really dramatically in the last six months is that broadband <coughs> is the driver for economic development. And the things that we're doing here, we're meeting on Zoom. Uh, we are going to see people accessing much more content this way. Uh, it, it is a way to provide, to provide interactive uh, services. So for our seniors out there, I'm working with the AARP right now. Uh, we're going to be putting out some general guidelines of the things that can be done over good broadband that allow people to stay in their homes longer and be more uh, interactive as they can't get to the senior center. Um, and, and all those things. And, and so it is a changing environment we're in, but it's, it's the environment that's here. Thank you, Marty. Any other questions for either Jack or Marty? Just a comment, uh, if I could, Mr. Chairman, uh, Marty and Jack, again, I appreciate very much uh, your willingness to respond to the request to come to the commission when uh, when it's appropriate and, and talk to us. Uh, and you do recognize that we, we represent uh, everyone in Sweetwater County and I appreciate that very much. Thank, thank you for the opportunity, commissioners. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. And we appreciate uh, you being here today and bring us up to speed. Uh, uh, is there any, if there's no more, we'll continue to move on with our business. Gentlemen, stay and thank you for your work. And thank you very much. Okay, with that, that concludes our uh, business for today on our regular agenda. But at this point in time, I'd like to uh, go into executive session for personnel. So if we could get a motion to go into executive session, we'll do that. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Smith. Before we do that, could I just have one moment? Yes, you may. Make a comment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it, was, it was brought to my attention that... Uh, um, during one of our breaks that perhaps we're not getting along as well as we used to. And somebody was wondering why that is. And I, Lauren talked about COVID fatigue. And I just wanted to say, I really do miss being face to face with all of you and having our side conversations during breaks or, or even during the meetings and, and, you know, looking at the whites of Roy's eyes when he's uh, marinating and, and, and that. So uh, I do miss all of you and I, I wish we could, could all be together. sounds like we'll be able to get there eventually. And I'm grateful for the plan that's been put together to uh, allow that. But it is tough. This COVID fatigue, the, the Zoom, um, it, it's not the same. So uh, just to let the people know that we, uh, we, uh, we're doing the work. <laughs> it's a little bit harder, but it's not quite the same. But we're still trying to do the work. So there you go. Well, and I'll make a motion to go into executive session. Thank you. you I think wait a minute, we got a motion to go into executive session, but I thought someone had a comment prior to that. Um, second the motion. All right, second the motion. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And I'd just like to say, Commissioner Smith, whoever brought that observation to you, I'm glad it was brought forth because, yes, I will look forward for all of us getting together again. I do miss the personable in us, and I do miss being in the same room. I do miss the sidebars, but uh, 
The one thing I will say for this commission through all of this and that is that they have uh, stepped up to the plate, done their very best, and uh, we'll continue to do their best. And when we get together, it'll even get better. So thank you. I, I appreciate that ob observation and that. So with that, we'll take a, uh, let's take a 10 minute break and be back together here at, uh, let's say, let's say at 105.